beloved one i hope you are doing well i want us to take a short reading from the book of psalms chapter 127 it says if god's grace doesn't help the builders they will labor in vain to build a house if god's mercy doesn't protect the city all the centuries will circle it in vain it's really a senseless to work so hard from morning till late at night toiling to make a living for fear of not having enough now god can provide i want you to see this it says god can provide for his devoted lovers even while they sleep now this tells us of the great things that we enjoy any time we come into God's presence. It tells us of the blessings we enjoy any time we are with God. And then we can do this through prayer, through the word of God, and even as we are about listening to this. So I want us to do something. We are going to like this video. So then please hit on the like button if you have not done so. This helps YouTube recommend this video out there to anyone so everyone can have access to it. Also, by doing this, you help in the spread of the gospel and of the good work of this channel. Then, don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section. Hit on that subscribe button if you haven't done so and you are new here. And then get on to the notification bell and do us the favor of tapping on it too. You were blessed and stay blessed. His presence is in this place to bless us, to help us, to take us to a plane in the spirit and to prepare us. This is what God is doing in the midst of his people. Come on, just sing in the spirit. Let a melody just come out from your spirit. Not pray, sing in the spirit. Paul said, I will pray in tongues. I will pray in the spirit and I will sing in the spirit. Lord, we are certain that our prophet will appear unto all. Hallelujah. Listen. It's important to subject yourself. Listen to me. It's important to subject yourself in this season to the dealings of the Spirit. Hallelujah. For there is an operation of the Spirit in the body of Christ. Revelations 5. Listen to me. If at this point in your life, you have not expressed dissatisfaction for religion and church then there is a need to do an extra work in your life to catch up hallelujah because the bible says the 20 and 4 elders listen to me that when they worshiped they said holy 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 is the lord god who was who is and who is to come these are dimensions of his operations that were revealed to the people hallelujah and so we see a dimension of god who was it's not a waste 
but it's to tell you that God is progressive so he will not end in the dimension who was and then they see who is hallelujah that which the spirit is doing at the moment and then by prophetic insight we have a revelation of that dimension that is to come and so it's important that as we stand and begin to relate with the things of the spirit in this day and age that we are able to understand the emphasis of the spirit for every time the bible says for the sons of Issachar, they had a comprehension of the times hallelujah and the bible says among the organization of god's creation he made stars and part of the ministry of some of those stars is to be able to signify to the inhabitants of the earth when seasons change to the end that we can align with the operation of the spirit for even the past glory of god contains a measure of glory the past revelation but that it is not sufficient to take us to the next dimensions that the nations would require and so it's important and it becomes a responsibility upon us as citizens of the kingdom to walk in peace with the Holy Ghost so that we are able to understand his operation for it is an error to assume that God is doing the same thing at every season hallelujah in the revelation I shared with us a few weeks ago hallelujah that there was a feast and there were rulers there those who were honored Jesus was in their midst but they did not recognize him the wedding in Cana the first miracle of Jesus a prophetic message to what the Holy Ghost is going to be doing and the Bible says the old wine finished but the festivity was still on the rulers did not know because they had been used to deceiving the people and they had lost touch with the source of the wine are you following me now and the Bible says the festivity was still on and there was a constraint happening but the people could not understand because there was no insight and the Bible says only the servants followed Mary the mother of Jesus and they said Jesus there is trouble the revelation of John which is sent to his servants oh this is the mystery that in this generation only servants will ride on horses the princes will receive an embarrassment because they will walk afoot hallelujah so the bible says the servants came to jesus they said although there are many crowds we are not confused about who holds authority and we call ourselves servants and we come and he said fill six pots and when they filled it with water hallelujah he said take it to the rulers and when he took it to the rulers they tasted when they thought the dispensation and the feast was over little did they know it was about to begin because a new kind of wine the bible says the rulers did not know where that wine came from only the servants hallelujah and so there is a transition and God is revealing things to his servants. He said the Lord will not do anything but he will reveal his counsel to his servants. Praise the Lord. Then it's our responsibility to begin to search and walk in peace with the Spirit. So that we can understand the things that the Spirit is doing at every given time. There are certain revelations that we understand that have been sealed. The Bible says in Revelations 5 that there was a call in heaven. And that call was that who is worthy. So there are certain revelations that is not given freely. It's a contention. It's gotten by qualification. It's a who is worthy. To that one he will be able to open the book and unlock the scroll. He said no man was worthy to open the book. And the elder began to cry. John. Why? Because in that revelation contains certain mysteries that should be opened up. And the Bible makes us to understand that the, elder, the angel tapped him and said weep not. For the lion of the tribe of Judah. The root of David is worthy to open the book.
Hallelujah. It's important to be in peace with what the Spirit of God is doing. And this is our desire in this place. The Bible says in the days of Samuel when the word of the Lord was cast. He didn't say, men, stop going to the temple. But he said the word of God was cast. Praise the Lord. So tonight, let it be that you didn't just come to do church as usual. Let it be that you came because you understand that receiving from God will position you to understand what he's doing in the spirit. And by alignment, you become a benefactor and you become usable. It's not enough to be available. You must be usable. Hallelujah. And only the Holy Spirit is able to help us into this truth. And so Lord, we thank you. Because you will bless us tonight. Lord, do not leave us behind. Let us follow up in pace with the things the Spirit is doing. In the name of the Lord Jesus. God bless you. Be seated. Good to have everyone around. Hallelujah. We're subjecting ourselves to the dealings of the Spirit again and again, every week, every week, week after week, month after month. We're subjecting ourselves as students in the school of the Spirit, allowing Him to teach us and to bring us into comprehension of kingdom realities. Hallelujah. Because a time will come when the dividends of this sacrifice will appear unto all. And we want to position ourselves. We are not careful to admit that not everybody is open to the things of the Spirit. Especially in this day and age where there are all kinds of Christian distractions. Hallelujah. The church of Christ has become a place where ethics of religion are taken as usual. But the presence of Christ and his body ought to be a place of freshness. Where we can communicate to the world what the spirit of God is doing at every given time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Tonight I want to share something that I believe will be a great journey, a great blessing to our journey in the spirit. How many of you were blessed last week? It was a wonderful time of prayer. Hallelujah. If the things of the spirit are still a burden to you, then there is need to retreat in the presence of God. Hallelujah. There are lots of believers who have a problem with the things of God. And I hope we do not have those kinds of people here. Let me tell you something. Um, whenever you come for koinonia, make sure that you're not just coming to fulfill a ritual. Are you listening to me, please? Ensure that you're not just coming to watch other people or to see what are the other things you must come with a predetermination and say lord what do you have for me that can help me in this journey we are in a journey i'm so happy every friday when i have the opportunity to share god's word because i understand that there is at least somebody who is interested in the things of the spirit and if God can find such a man, he can produce a wonder out of him. Praise the Lord. First Peter 2. Say after me, God is preparing an army. Say it like you believe it. God is preparing an army. Ask your neighbor, are you part of this army? Tell your neighbor, don't tell lies. Unto him who 
who sits on the throne Blessings and honor To Jesus, the Lamb who was slain Glory and power Forever and ever and ever you reign Forever and ever you reign Forever and ever and ever you reign Forever and ever you reign Hallelujah First Peter 2 verse 9 First Peter 2 verse 9 hmm. But ye are a chosen generation a royal priesthood it Never said you are members of living faith or Christ's embassy or deeper life or redeemed those are structures. You get my point? But I'm saying beyond the structures, you must look. It says, ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a people of his own, that you should show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. So the Bible tells us clearly here that we have been called out of darkness and given an assignment hallelujah and that assignment is to show forth the praises of him that has called us out of darkness into his marvelous light hallelujah and tonight we're going to be examining how far we've gone in this journey and obtain grace to press ahead hallelujah The children of Issachar, the Bible says, had an understanding of the times. And as a result, they knew what to do. They knew how to align themselves with the things that the Spirit was attempting to bring. And not everyone is able to align himself to the things that the Holy Ghost is doing. You know why? Because alignment means that you have to die to yourself. Hallelujah. Alignment means that you are bending to assume a posture that may not be convenient. And so it takes a revelation bigger than yourself and your personal comforts to say, Lord, regardless of how this will affect me, I am prepared to come into alignment with your divine will to the end that your plans and purposes be achieved at every given time. That as you search for men and women that you will use to do exploits. That you can find a vessel in me. The Bible says, but in a great house there are not only vessels of wood. Or gold and silver, but of wood and of clay. He says, some are unto dishonor and some are unto honor. He says, if a man will purge himself, that man will become a vessel unto honor. Fit for the master's use. Say after me once again, God is raising an army. And say, I am part of that army. I am part of that army. Led by the Spirit. Hallelujah. Joel chapter 2. We'll just establish a few things. And then we'll pray. verse 1 blow the trumpet in Zion sound the alarm on my holy mountain let all the inhabitants of the earth tremble for the day of the Lord cometh for it is near at hand 
a day of darkness and of gloominess a day of clouds and of thick darkness like the morning spread upon the mountains a great people this is the description of God's army please listen a great people and strong there has not ever been like them before you cannot trace them to any history neither shall any more be after it even to the years of many generations they are characterized by a fire that devoureth before them they are men of fire confirming that which the bible says he maketh his angels winds and his ministers flames and behind them a flame burneth and the land is like the garden of eden before them and behind them a desolate wilderness yea nothing shall escape them they are thorough people the appearance of them is like the appearance of horses and like the horsemen so shall they run like the noise of chariots on the mountain tops they shall leap like the noise of the flame of fire that devoured the stubble like a like a strong people set in a battle array before their face the people shall be much pain all faces shall gather blackness the bible says they shall run like mighty men look at this description they shall climb the wall like men of war they shall march everyone on his ways and they shall not break their ranks no competition no dabbling into unnecessary things everyone maintaining focus that's what watch my knee calls the limitation of the body the capacity to allow every member to function within the jurisdiction of their grace the bible says they will not break ranks neither shall one trust another they shall walk everyone in his path and when they fall upon the sword can you imagine they shall not be wounded what an army they shall run to and fro in the city they shall run upon the wall and they shall climb upon the houses they shall enter in at the windows like a thief the earth shall quake before them the heavens shall tremble the sun and the moon shall be dark and the star shall withdraw her shining the bible says the sun will no more give you sunlight by day the moon will no more give you light by moon. it says jehovah the christ himself he will be your everlasting light that means they will function from a different source of illumination not that which has been known are you listening to me because he made many lights but at the emergence of the two great lights there was no longer those kinds of lights it's not like they were not truth but they were no longer needed in light of the higher lights hmm. let's finish up the lord shall utter his voice before his army that means the lord himself is the commander for his camp is very great for he is strong who executed his word for the day of the lord is great and very terrible who can abide look up please there is there is a campaign of the spirit the holy ghost is running to and fro across the length and breadth of this nation the nation of africa and across the world searching for men and women who will avail themselves to be used hallelujah every time before a kairos moment in the earth god begins to prepare a people and the first thing he does is to begin to beckon on them so that they willingly offer themselves and say we are available are you listening to me we are available and then he separates those people and begins to subject them to the trainings that will equip them for his agenda now the very difficult thing is this separation is a very difficult thing because it entails you breaking away from status quo breaking away from what has been received as the norm and so your mind will fight it everything around you will fight it and the pressure that standing alone will bring to you will ask you whether it is worth it to stand that's why the bible says haven't done all to stand stand hallelujah and all over the body of christ 
there has been a sudden awakening pastors, apostles, preachers, evangelists as many who are careful enough to listen to the promptings and the dealings of the spirit they are beginning to blow this alarm in Zion and to sound it upon his holy mountain that there are a people that God is preparing, is raising, is training, is building. And that the fashion of this training is not one that will be traced to the dealings of God in the past. Here and there we could take extracts from the dealings of God with Abraham, Jacob, Isaac. But that there is a unique operation of the spirit that is bringing on this caliber of people. That will necessitate staying with the Holy Ghost part time. You will not miss the Holy Ghost and go back to history and expect to catch up. Because the dealings are foreign to the things that he has done before. And so God will entail that these people will subject themselves to the total leadership of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. This is why coming under the Lordship of the Spirit is only the beginning of the journey, not the end. Coming under the Lordship means that you are bringing yourself under subjection to say, Lord, you are looking for an army and you are training and preparing men and I may not have all that it takes right now, but I have a willing heart. I watched Catherine Kuhlman yesterday and I cried. I wept like a baby when I watched this dear woman of God standing in power, an epitome of yieldedness to the Holy Ghost. hallelujah and while she stood on the stage ministering the word of god you could see the oneness the similitude you could see how how intertwined how mingled this woman had been with the holy ghost that her utterances were so piercing not because of the volume of her voice but the depth and the realm from which she was fetching these things from a woman and she made an interesting statement. She said, Catherine Kuman died a long time ago. She said, I remember the date and the time I died. She entered a realm in the spirit called Galatians 2.20. I have been crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ that lives in me. He has now become my new life. And my movement is according to the impulse of the spirit. And that is going to be the characteristic of the spiritual man. Speaking to Nicodemus, Jesus said, The wind bloweth where it listeth. You will not be able to predict this generation of people. Because they have subjected themselves under the total influence of the spirit. That's where we get the word baptism. It's from the Greek word baptizo. It means to be totally immersed in a flood such that you do not see the person again. You only see the object that immersed him. And so we come under the influence of the Holy Spirit. Now a lot of believers have trivialized the ministry of the Holy Spirit. But without the Holy Spirit, there is no hope. The Holy Spirit is the guarantee. Listen to me. He is the guarantee that we can become that army to the expectation of God. Because he's the one who guides us and builds us. Brothers and sisters, hear me. This has been our journey all through Koinonia. It is not a move to make a name. It's an attempt to cooperate with the Spirit. And partner with him. In bringing a convergence of as many who are interested in becoming part of this move of God. Who will indicate willingness to subject themselves to the dealings of the spirit over time. We don't tell you lies here. We don't hype you with, with all kinds of nonsense. The word of God comes in truth and power. And I've said it again, it will cost you to align with the spirit. The Bible says there is no man that warreth who will entangle himself with the activities of civilians. And so when you come, there will be a demand upon you to lay aside your ambition and pick up that of the king. But then as surely as the Lord lives, there will be a reward for that sacrifice. He said meditate on these things. Give yourself wholly to them. 
that your profiting will appear unto all. So I'm aware that there are different kinds of people and different kinds of soils. And so I want us to start tonight by reminding ourselves that every time we appear before God in Zion, we came for business. Hallelujah. We didn't just come to um, enjoy the atmosphere or to while away two or three hours. No. We came based on the revelation. Listen, I must get you to understand this. If you do not, you will not be able to benefit maximally. Are you following me now? You must come with a predetermination that I am coming to continue the training. It is not an endless training. There is a day the sound of the trumpet will blow. And at such times you will appreciate the meticulous dealings of the spirit. Touching issues after issues. Aspects after aspects. Flogging out a lot of things. Pruning different things. The Bible says narrow is the path that leads to life. Why? Because when you are entering that path, Jesus gave us a similitude of that revelation using the eye of the needle. It will, it will entail you divorcing yourself with a lot of things and going alone. So the path is narrow. In other words, the things that can pass have been predetermined. You will not come with excess luggages and mindsets. But wide is the way that leads to destruction. And Jesus said, because the rich people have a lot of things, he said they may not be able to pass. Are you following me? And so you come with your ambitions and different things. And then some of us may come just to use Jesus Christ as an errand boy as usual. Because that's the move that has been taught in the body of Christ. And so we have a need-driven congregation who only come to God as a means to an end. And that end is to satisfy their belly and to bring themselves in a position where they are comforted. Rulers in the feast while the Lord of the harvest is in the congregation. He's not honored and he's not esteemed. But the Bible tells us in heaven that there will be a supper. And in that supper, the one who should be the head will actually be the head. Are you following me tonight? And so the first challenge that the Holy Ghost places before us tonight is to ask you how serious are you? How much are you convicted? What is your passion about the things of God and about this army that God is mobilizing? What is your concept of Christianity and church and religion? Why do you pursue God? He said, why do you call me Lord? And then I notice that there is only a receiving from you. There is no doing. You call me Lord because you came and understood by knowledge that there is a dimension of me that is able to supply your needs. You call me Lord because you understand that there is a dimension that is able to protect you and give you a wife and give you a husband. But this kind of army are not the ones who are going to tie God to a covenant. They are going to say, Lord, blessing or no blessing. They are the type who were sent to the vineyard without negotiation. They did not negotiate. When he called the people in the morning, they said, we will only work if you will pay us a denary. He said, you mean... If I don't pay you, you won't work. He said, no pay, no work. And he said, all right. You have tied a covenant with me, go. Later, he found some people sitting. And he said, do you love me enough to work in my vineyard? They said, yes. No arrangement. And they entered the vineyard. At the end of the day, even those who came willingly, but at the 11th hour, got the same reward with those who gave God conditions. And they were angry. And he said, am I not the Lord of the harvest? What did I do that was wrong? That Christianity that gives God conditions before your allegiance must be destroyed is witchcraft coming from the pit of hell. Mm. Are you listening to me? Job said, though he slay me, yet will I praise him. Men and women who love God with their life, with their soul, with their all. Your passion is not motivated by any loss that you have hidden. Waiting to be manifested. And you say, Lord, I love you and I believe your word. But I am more passionate than any other thing. 
I'm not just pursuing you. Listen. It's time the church body begins to define what is motivating the apostle to God. Are you listening to me? Because that is what will determine how far we will continue in this journey. If you are pursuing God for money or fame or husband or wife, that means the day you get married, you have no need to pursue again. Are you listening to me? And so our desire for, for God must come from an eternal plane that nothing in time will be able to quench that hunger. This becomes the platform on which authentic Christianity will spring from. To say, Lord, I love you and I'm committed. Whatever your agenda is, I am interested. I get troubled in my spirit seeing how many believers openly do not care about the agenda of God. The average church in Nigeria is only interested in fulfilling programs and holding conferences and conventions and we name all kinds of things and we are happy we are meticulous in planning the ego of the, the man of God or the organizer is at stake and every kind of artistry and accuracy comes into it but the one whose agenda we should pursue he is left and the rulers are contending to be lords in the feast are you listening to me and so spiritual growth is not just an act of knowing scripture. It's first coming to a point where you realize that you have no life of your own. Listen to me. That's not the end. That's the beginning. This is the reason why a spiritual man is, he watched so much in the presence of God. Because of all of these sacrifices that you have to subject yourself to. And tonight, what is your motivation? Why are you pursuing God? Why are you running after the things of God? Is it with a passion that will expire when certain things come into your life? Or is it a genuine passion? You say, Lord, I thank you because you will give me a wife and a husband and a car and all of this. But I need you to know that I mean business with you. Are you just pursuing God because you are a student? And then you need him so that you can use him as a ladder towards academic success. And the day you cry and you graduate, you just wave him and say, Lord, there are many others who didn't backslide like me so you can concentrate on them. Lovest thou me more than this? This was a question that he asked Peter. Because, you know, listen, let me tell you something. Peter is, a, is an interesting figure. When Jesus was going to clean the feet of the disciples, Peter said, ah, I respect you so much. I mean, come on, how can you clean my feet? Jesus said, you do not even know what I'm doing. And Peter said, now, just bath me. Now I understand. And he was the one who ran away and betrayed Jesus to the point that he called a little girl woman because he was trying to defend himself. Hallelujah. And when the hidden agenda that was in their heart see eventually over time the agenda in their heart for pursuing jesus began to unravel when the mother of james and john came to meet jesus on behalf of her two sons meaning they were already nursing it that jesus will conquer caesar and now become the king of the roman empire and then at that point the disciples will become members of the cabinet so while they were pursuing him they were already setting their campaign strategies on ground and they use their mother and the mother will say you know i'm a woman what will you do to my children because i got disturbed at the speed with which they left fishing and started following jesus they didn't think about it jesus was a celebrity come and they say of course i've always wanted and then later on when they found out that this journey was getting too long they started asking questions first among themselves this is why you see a preacher 10 years diligence in, in God and then after a while he just says Lord at least heaven knows I've tried because the motif that was behind the establishment of that ministry is beginning to be revealed hallelujah are you following me tonight the light of God is searching our hearts to help us this is how we grow in the spirit. A 
and then at a particular time they wanted to motivate themselves in the absence of Jesus because they did not understand what governmental authority is they did not understand that you only receive results when you are sent Jesus went with Peter, James and John and the remaining disciples gathered themselves around and they could not stand the ego and the embarrassment that the crowd around them they said look why wait for Jesus can't we take initiatives on our own and they brought somebody who was epileptic and they did not understand the order and the trainings in the spirit and how things are done they began to assume the position so that in the absence of Jesus they might receive a temporary glory and console their loss before his arrival and they were disappointed because they saw Jesus do it with ease and they thought it would happen that same way here and there in the Bible you will see men who pursue Jesus Christ for different reasons people who wanted to buy anointing so the, 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 the issue of buying anointing did not start from our generation when they saw that by the laying on of hands men were receiving the Holy Ghost how much let me give you and the church of Christ has turned into a place of gullible men and women of God selling what they perceive to be the anointing and we have a church that will not grow because the price for growth is unbearable and so we rather prefer to, in, to, to mediate and use the prophetic and the apostolic and whatever can stand to give us a momentary succor so if I need to find out whether it's the will of God for the job or not I know that if I'm to follow the regular part of the spirit I may need to wait upon the Lord in praying and fasting for three days and I say why waste my time when there is a donkey called a prophet and an apostle that we can ride gloriously on and so we have a result oriented church man of God tell me what will become of my life and we do not know him and we are not even interested in the agenda of God and let me tell you friends if God does not raise carpenters to judge the manifestation of these horns that rise up against Judah I tell you there will be casualty in our generation a time will come when the new age will wipe Christianity if we do not stand and this is why God is creating platforms like this across the nations the remnant who will stand and say no this is not the pattern of the spirit are you listening to me it cannot be church as usual the average Christian is taught know nothing about Jesus do you know I asked somebody one day I said who is Jesus born again spirit filled I said who is Jesus and he was shocked to find out that he did not even know what to tell me about Jesus he just said he's the savior of the world let me ask you who is Jesus no 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 don't give me a, a guesswork or what you got from your Bible who is Jesus do you know him if you don't stop telling lies on stage that he's your friend because the way we talk about him is as though we drank tea with him but then you ask him who is Jesus who is the Holy Ghost amazing that the church does not even know the Holy Ghost scholars know more about the Holy Ghost than the church they have researched as critics and come up with facts that the church is not even aware we are not interested the message about Jesus and the Holy Ghost and the kingdom and the life of God the priority and the agenda of the father that should be the pivot of the operation of every church is absent and we have replaced it with all kinds of activities making money promoting people and you see people trying to be zealous in church and all they are looking for is the name deacon or pastor and that becomes our ultimate satisfaction there needs to be a redefinition of what has been motivating us in our pursuit for God no wonder at every challenge many believers stand and give up but the Bible says if your strength fails you in the day of battle that means you did not gather strength hallelujah if I were the pastor of many churches after this service they will have a board meeting about me 
I say we don't like this kind of thing. You don't come and spoil our minds. Read about Jesus Christ. Elijah was called a troublemaker in Israel. And right now you have believers who come into a building. They say, why didn't they put AC? I'm sweating and I'm getting inconvenienced. But students can stand to collect scholarship in front of guidance and counseling. In the hot sun, 5,000, 10,000, 15,000. You are determined to get it. No matter what happens, you stand on that line. You maintain your position. They want to push you. You say, I'm not going anywhere. They say, you're a lady. You say, I know. I will show you I'm a lady of Jesus. We, 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 so we have that spirit of determination. But when it comes to the things of the spirit, you hold a service after one hour, 30 minutes, everybody's looking at their watch. And it's not like they have something to do afterwards. Because immediately after the meeting, you see them greeting one another for hours. So why the hurry? What is motivating us? What drives our pursuit for God? Are we passionate? When Jesus came, he said, listen, this is my meat. In other words, I derive satisfaction in this the will of the father he said i must walk the him the works of him that sent me while it is day he placed urgency on his assignment for the night comment when no man can walk again is there an urgency in your spirit to pursue god hallelujah and then the second group of people in church that we have are those who have pressed onto god to a measure and then got to that measure and based on what we want to call movements holiness movement word of faith movement charismatic movement the moment you contend to the point that you enter the the revelations of a movement you are satisfied and there is no pressure upon our spirits to contend for greater height not realizing that there are certain scrolls that have been closed that if we will contend it will be open unto us and we will open up new revelations about God and be a blessing to the body. So I ask you a question tonight under God. Are you really interested in the agenda of the Father? What are you really? Define what motivates you. Heaven, wife, money, CGPA, a job. At what point Will you rest and say, Kai, I've tried in this Christian journey. You must define it right now. I will go. I will go. Wherever you lead me. Yeah. I will go. I will go. I will go. And that be the anthem of your life that when people ask you and say what is your plan and goal in life you will first tell them that all that I'm about to tell you is a derivative of what God has committed unto me I did not sit down and cook up any ambition for myself because I am bound by an oath to my Savior that I will stand and live for him. I have brought myself willingly under the government and the sovereign rule of the king. And I will not compromise. Before I continue, we are going to pray for five minutes. And that prayer, listen to me, please. Don't bow your head. We are not bowing heads here. We are going to pray audibly. Hallelujah. And the prayer is going to say, Lord... I lay down my idols and thrones I have made and all that has taken my heart. You will hear us preach this again and again. Lord, I will bow to you to no other.
We are going to repent before we continue in this service. The first repentance is to say, Lord, I'm ashamed to find out that there has been a hidden loss that has been motivating my pursuit for you. But tonight I repent. Are you listening to me? You're going to pray. Because you know I'm not lying. I pray this to God every time. I say, Lord, if there is any other reason aside from my love for you, why I pursue you, judge it, prune it, and bring me to a point where I become a dead man without you. Is that your prayer? We are going to pray. Lift up your voice and pray. Say, Lord, I lay down idols. I cannot deny that I have needs. But Lord, I have led these needs to motivate my love for you. Come on, pray. Come on, pray. Manda braste pakate baladaba. E pari e katabale na na bosi na 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 na. E pari boso na na Maria na balada bosi. Re katabala na base katabala dia na 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 na. Lord, hidden in me is the ability to want fame. I cannot deny it. And while it is not bad, I have allowed it to motivate my pursuit. Lord, I've been crying for spiritual gifts because I don't want to have suffered inferiority complex. And so, I'm looking for what will ease it away. And unfortunately, I allowed it to slip and become my motivation for you. Lift your voice and pray. Kata kata palada bakaya. Lepro sote berere bos. Kapate krosto pende kete balada ba. Rapa kasto prosko pende keta. Pray. Say Lord, I came here with a need. But Lord, in the light of your word, if I will be honest with myself, I'm just pursuing you. The hunger increased simply because I needed a solution. Not because I loved you. Not because I was passionate about your agenda. Make sure you are praying. Make sure you are praying. Make sure you are praying. I have made you too small in my eyes. We are still praying. Oh Lord. Forgive me. And I have believed in a lie. That you are unable to help me. But tonight in Koinonia. But now, oh Lord, I see my wrong. Heal my heart and show yourself strong. And in my heart and with my soul. Oh Lord, be mad. Come on, magnify him above your knees. Oh Lord, be magnified. Be magnified. Be magnified. Oh Lord, you are highly exalted. I pledge allegiance to 
last time. Sing it from your heart. I pledge allegiance to the land. We don't. Your passion for God will tell in your desire for evangelism. Your passion for God will tell in how much you give to the house of God. Your desire will tell how much you pray for the house of God. Your desire will tell and how much you love the word of God how much you love his spirit we are still praying five minutes say Lord search my heart I'm not pretending tonight I cannot lie there are idols in my heart I'm a Christian I'm born again I'm filled with the Holy Ghost but Lord if you do not give me certain things after some time I may begin to reconsider my passion help me tonight I came to Koinonia for my passion to be renewed help me I want to grow help me Lord I'm sorry I've taken your pursuit and replaced it with many things say Lord I didn't even know when certain desires overtook a genuine passion I was so distracted by the burdens upon me that I did not realize that I had missed out on a genuine passion genuine passion not tied to marriage not tied to money not tied to fame not tied to ministry, not tied to anointing. I have been crucified with Christ. I have been crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ. Christ. Christ in me. Christ above me, Christ before me, Christ by my side, my motivation, the beginning, the end. Hallelujah. Listen to me. Listen. God is re examining the foundations from which our pursuit for Christ is hinged on because the Bible says if the foundation it says if the foundation be destroyed are you listening to me? we are still praying I have not finished the teaching but I just sense in my spirit to sing one more song it 
It's all about you. It's all about you. If you don't believe it, don't sing it yet. Keep quiet. Keep quiet. When you get the revelation, you can join. But for as many who mean it, it's all about you. It's all about you. It's all about you. Jesus. Hey. It's all about you. It's all about you. Hey, la mala la macaria la mala la mala la mala. Hey, 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 hey. It's all about you. It's all about you. It's all about you. For the last time now. It's all about you. All about you, Lord. All about you, Jesus. You will realize what, listen, listen. From this light of God, you will realize why you are not proud of standing for Jesus in the presence of your friends. It's because you are not yet convinced. That's why you cannot share Jesus with others. You are afraid of the embarrassment. You are conscious of your beauty. That's an idol. You are conscious of it. Lest it will kill an opportunity to be in a relationship. You cannot share Christ with your business partner. With your lecturer. We have replaced him with different things in our hearts. So every time Satan comes. He comes projecting your loss first and foremost so that you cannot resist Lord help us tonight hallelujah hallelujah that's why you are here please be seated and let's continue Hallelujah. The Bible makes us to understand that before the day of the Lord, listen to me, the spirit of Elijah, Malachi 4, before the spirit, before the day of the Lord, the spirit of Elijah will be sent forth to prepare the way. And so before Jesus came, the spirit of Elijah was sent forth. And he began to prepare the way. How was he preparing the way? Calling the people to realize how bad they had fallen. Not because he could redeem them. Baptism at that time was not a sign of new birth. It was an indication that they would be interested in what Jesus was coming to offer. So as many who were convicted by his teaching. Prepared their hearts. So that when the Messiah showed up. They would not resist him. For John himself did not have any power to save any man. But he said, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness. He was an echo. And right now that same spirit of Elijah has been released upon the body of Christ. To expose the works of iniquity and to bring the sons of God into righteousness. And this is what is happening across every church and every denomination that truly names the name of Christ is a manifestation of this prophetic spirit that is able to receive of the things of God and communicate it fearlessly. This is how your Christianity will last. So that 30 years from now you will raise your children in the fear of the Lord. They will know no other doctrine and no other gospel. By default, they will, they will be built knowing that they love God and they have a passion for Him and Him alone. Hallelujah. Romans chapter 8. When the Holy Ghost brings you to this position, the next thing that happens is 
he begins to subject you through different dealings and trainings please listen this is important this is the principle the way god prepares his army and the way hallelujah now please look up one is not a tragedy but if we don't do anything about it it will become an old wine hallelujah there was a time in the body of christ when our pursuit was for rema praise god please listen to me rema and the quality of your ministry was proportional to the depth of rema insight into scripture hallelujah how you could compare scripture with scripture how you could quote whole chapters hallelujah nothing wrong in that we gave awards to people for quoting chapters and chapters of scripture but i needed to know that in the progression of the dealings of god listen the holy ghost begins by exposing you to the knowledge of god are you listening to me he brings you to that point where you begin to know about god through the scripture you begin to browse through scripture and see the character of god and see his life and his nature and his principles but can i tell you something and this is where a lot of the church body need to upgrade their life and anytime i say this people get offended i don't castigate ministers but i am the voice that must echo the things that i hear in the spirit are you listening to me i don't have a problem with any church in fact there is no channel i don't watch but listen to me let me tell you something when you say i'm born again i'm a new creation in christ hallelujah that settles it i need you to know listen to me that it's not the fault of those who have brought this revelation and it's not a lie but that is not all there is are you listening to me it's not a lie because scripture cannot be broken however if that is the only perspective that is seen in the body then there is no completion are you following me now and so there was a an error and a dispensation where our fathers contended and pressed in the spirit and they came into that dimension where they began to understand that wow from scripture i'm free from condemnation are you listening to me i'm free but the bible says knowledge shall increase meaning it was not supposed to stop with that discovery are you listening to me that is a sign of a healthy christian that there is progression into the depths of the spirit the bible says we see in part and according to that part we prophesy so when god enlarges that which you see you begin to prophesy but many people have camped around certain revelations and will fight anything that looks above it calling it error are you listening to me there are many people who have been taught in church that there's nothing like demons nothing like satan the only demon you have is in your mind but that's not true well for those who grew up under cnn but for those who my father's mother was a traditionalist are you listening to me so i'm not trying to guess that satan exists it's one thing to believe he exists it's another thing to believe he has power over you that is where it's faulty are you listening to me but for you to just kick away and say forget it there's no demon anywhere ha ah, be careful because many of the people who are speaking will later on find out the reason why they are stunted in their life and will not make advancement a number of them have discovered it but their arrogance will not allow them to admit that they have seen a greater light and so they would rather prefer to camp in what they believe to be the final revelation of the dimension of god that is given to man when you read a lot of kenneth Hagin's books there are many things written in that book that you might not totally agree with right now is that correct that was because during kenneth Hagin's time the level and the operation of the spirit and the truths that were opened there was what he received and documented so you cannot criticize him but at the same time in as much as we call him a general we cannot stop at that level are you listening to me so i cannot build a camp around kenneth Hagin and say all that he taught the thing that was moving the church was physical manifestation gold dust 
silver dust. Everybody will bring every kind of thing. Your watch, the, the silver on your watch will scratch on your hand and say, see, gold dust. And it was not wrong. Listen to me. But the Holy Ghost was studying the way we were responding to it. The moment it would become an idol, he sees that experience so that we will continue with the next dealings of the Spirit. But where you encamp around gold dust and you find your ministry around gold dust and oil and so on and so forth, then there will be trouble because you will resist those who are progressing in the spirit and you will try to create many teachings to prove that they are in error not knowing that you are the one who is taunted and even when the holy ghost is ministering to you a time will come the light will be too bright you cannot explain and so you will begin to get angry because the people are not stupid the bible says it will happen to us as it happened in nephtha and zebulun he said the people in nephtha and zebulun there was a prophecy it says those who are in darkness they have seen a great light not a light a great light So it will happen a great light one characteristic of a healthy church is the ability to transit with the spirit but when the man of God takes the place of God and makes himself the final authority in the church he is unable to adjust because his ego will not be able to accommodate the explanations he has to give for his transition in the spirit Transition in the spirit is not, is not a thing of embarrassment. Hallelujah. There are ministers who stop their members from reading some books because of insecurity. They want to keep the members around what they believe is the full and universal counsel of God. And I hear a lot of ministers teach with such arrogance and they do not know that there are other dimensions that are being opened up. There are many who did not stop in yesterday's wine. They kept contending. And God is opening greater doors. And those doors, just like in 2005, when the revival came to the campus about the ministry of the Holy Spirit and what we know today to be new creation realities. It happened in 2005. And that was the time when we were coming into this knowledge. We didn't even know these things. We were coming into this knowledge. The revelation of Kenyon's teachings. The revelation of Pastor Chris's teachings. I mean, I was so blessed. I'll never forget how many times we lock ourselves. Boy, we're stepping into things in the anointing. Those times, if someone fell on the floor, you will run and catch the person and take him to sick bay because you are not sure what happened. But right now, even in your prayer group, three people, even unbelievers now have acclimatized to the fact that there is a manifestation of the spirit and people can fall. But we cannot stop there. And so what is there? What else is there to look? Because the mistake that many of us are making in our churches and the rest is we are encamping around an experience and will not move. As See, a man of God is not the one who is supposed to look at the people. He's supposed to set his eyes on the cloud. The moment the cloud begins to motion movement, he alerts the people and says the cloud is moving. Begin to follow and move. Are you listening to me? Because at that time, we are taught that if there is no instant manifestation in your life, something was wrong with your faith. And so while the Holy Ghost was trying to deal with us and taking us through processes that will bring us into maturity, those teachings were, were wrestling his ministry in our lives. But as an act of God's grace, we're able to switch and to align. And to realize that in Hebrews 11, there were women who raised their dead back. And women, those times we could not explain what happens if a family dies. Hallelujah. We don't know what message to tell them. Because we have been taught you are supposed to stand and live forever. And any death is a sign of weakness and Satan and so on and so forth. But that was good to a measure. But it is not applicable today. There must need to be a growth. And so we read from scripture by the Holy Ghost. How that some people died. Are you listening to me? Without receiving the promise. And he said other people raised their dead back to life. He joined all the experiences and called it faith. So we began to question the things that we had been believing. Not to scorn the people. But to say look. Where they put full stop is supposed to be a comma. 
there are many of you there are experiences god is giving you you have not found a confirmation yet i hope we have time wherever we can stop today and every time you go to your pastor they tell you no this kind of thing we we don't like it you see that it is a new operation it's the manifestation of the new wine it must be discerned in an atmosphere where people have ears and they can tell you although this is strange we confirm by the spirit that this is an operation of the lord fire on many of you have stunted your spiritual growth because of different messages you have heard for instance i know people who say just pray for five minutes and pray for 10 minutes you are a king speak it once <laughs> brother let me tell you the truth if that is how you want to raise your christianity there will be a bitter casualty that will teach you a lesson that may take decades for you to recover from because the bible gives us the character of a man of prayer he said elijah was a man of like passion he said he prayed earnestly are you listening to me so there is nothing wrong in receiving the teachings that you have but i'm only saying we salute the generals i respect every man of god i mention them by name they have been impacts to our lives until today we still listen to them forever they remain generals they have entered the hallmark of grace however there is a fresh mandate upon our generation are you listening to me and according to the measure of grace that is coming upon us we cannot use the new discoveries we are having to mock them for that will be immaturity but at the same time we will not refuse to progress because we want to pay our homage and allegiance to their doctrines are you growing tonight because if i don't balance this many of you will now stand and watch some of our fathers and hear their revelation like i see a lot of people do and they just laugh they say i've left this realm when you find yourself doing that you are a child it's not demon possession the remedy is just to grow up are you listening to me i have tapes and tapes i follow the man of god ardently because listen although eli's eye was dim it was eli who told samuel that it was the voice of god eli was a type of our fathers although their eyes are getting dim not because they are backsliding but their dispensation and the blueprint of their prophetic agenda is coming to an end so there is a mantle transfer in the spirit although they may to some of you not look relevant we approach them with discretion one leg we are approaching the spirit and saying holy ghost we are trusting you and then we are receiving direction you see the balance so you don't begin to use your revelation and say ah this ministry they just teach on this and that and that no we appreciate them and we salute them forever they are called generals compared to them we are only but toddlers rising up in the spirit however he told jeremiah do not be afraid of the people and say i am young for i will put my words in your mouth he said go and speak so there is an emergence of people we will be persecuted because of our age and because we are not conforming to the mold of religion how be it there is a new wine and the one who sent us will stand to defend us this is why you will see a lot of young people doing supernatural things for god but then if we are careful and we are trained enough we will realize that in the midst of all of these things we ought to give god glory hallelujah so tell your neighbor change your full stop to a comma say it one more time change your full stop to a comma do not reject the operations of the spirit open up yourself please don't be caught up in that thing my church my pastor this is what we believe God is leading you to a book in the bookstore. It may be by an author you don't like. There's nobody I don't watch. Let your mind grow while nobody. If I cannot learn anything, at least I can learn diligence in ministry. So you must maintain a posture. Are you listening to me?
so the dealings of the spirit when the Holy Ghost begins to walk and shed off a lot of religion from our lives follow me to Romans please let's see how far we can get and then we'll pray blessed be the name of the Lord can we pray in tongues for two minutes just seated go ahead and pray in tongues get used to it the Bible says these signs will follow them that means when the authentic church arises by grace this will be part of the signs like I said there are many of you who probably may be here and have a problem with what we are doing don't reject it just open up your heart and seek understanding we are loving enough to explain Lord let me grow Lord let me grow Lord let me grow in the name of Jesus I refuse to lag behind hallelujah the first thing that happens to you hallelujah the work of a believer is that by acknowledging that Jesus is Savior over your life and his Lordship the Bible makes us to understand that the Spirit of God comes to live in you. Hallelujah. The Bible says, He that is joined to Christ is what? One Spirit. So there is a oneness that happens from the realm of your spirit. What is the result? Faith is imparted in you. And suddenly, you begin to gain meaning over spiritual things. The things you would have rejected because the Spirit of God lives in you. He begins to direct you. Now watch this. You will read in your Bible as you progress in this journey. Now you are born again. And then you begin to read in your Bible. Let the weak say I am strong. Let the poor say I am rich. Wonderful. Then you find another one. You have been anointed to heal the sick, to cast out devils. Wonderful. You keep noting the scripture. Hallelujah. By the time you have 30 or 40 beautiful scriptures, now you will, you will rise up based on the confidence of those scriptures. God will not fail. Hallelujah. Then your first attempt on a man on a wheelchair, he doesn't stand. And then a question begins to brew in your heart. What happened? hallelujah and then you saw that you are the head and not the tail then your result came out and you saw a carryover and you said well uh, uh, God is just something is there. you just leave the question mark there and then some of us go to our men of God and say please what meaneth these things I'm not getting it the things I see in scripture and the manifestation in my life is creating a contrast and most of us men of God all we tell God's innocent people because that is the limitation of the perspective that we see you don't have faith it's not enough stir up your faith if his faith is you walk now the people stare how do I stare and they get books and they keep reading they read different kinds of books volumes of books to the point that they can recite the books and then they don't see a noticeable improvement in their life and they come back and then we are unable to give them answers. Listen to me. The journey of a believer, the moment you give your heart to the Lord, listen, you begin to progress from knowing God to entering into an experiential walk with Him. Are you listening to me? And the experience of God with a man cannot be taught. It is unique. It is a unique dealing. Are you listening to me? Now, through those experiences, your convictions about the things you see in the world begin to crystallize and gain substance. Are you listening to me? The first area of argument is your mind. The Bible says in Romans chapter 8 verse 5, let's look at it quickly. 
Romans 8 from verse 5 for they that are after the flesh do what? they do mind the things of the flesh but they that are after the spirit the things of the spirit he said for to be carnally minded that means to be ruled by your senses to be ruled by your emotions to be ruled by the things you see the things you hear and all of these things the bible says to be ruled by them any other thing other than Christ is death in other words it is an effort in futility hallelujah and so your mind begins to wrestle the things of God because when God steps into your life listen he's not seeking a space he's seeking the whole he's not seeking a part of you and say okay other things uh -uh. the moment he stands there he begins to wrestle and push every other thing hallelujah and that's where the willing submission of a believer begins listen to me you can choose where to stop in your spiritual journey by saying lord i've tried and i've come thus far this one will not go god will begin to touch them one. are you ready to listen to me so you love god so much and then one day god will say empty your account you say how about god i bind i reject that demon he has taught something He's bringing your finances into obedience with Christ. Then he touches your, your uncle who sends you money all the time. Say, Lord, my faith is working. Now he doesn't send you money. And what happens? Eh, my faith is still working. After two months, you really find out that the one you've been trusting was not God. Hallelujah. And then he keeps touching those things until he comes to a point where he is exalted king i like a song that says he's exalted the king is exalted on high you know that song he's exalted the king is exalted on high powerful song So the Holy Ghost begins to wrestle your flesh. What happens? You are born again. And although you are shouting, but the issue of women, you have not, you have not surrendered that part. So there is half Babylon, half. You are, you are filled with the Holy Ghost. And you are preaching. Hallelujah. But then you sit down and start remembering those days when you, in the, you are in the world. And every lady that passes around you, if any guy stands, you say, you are covering my view, please. There is a contention. This is what the Bible is telling us. Are you following me now? Galatians chapter 5 from verse 16. It now begins to tell us. It said, now I say then, walk in the spirit. And you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. It said, for the flesh lusted after the spirit. And the spirit after the flesh. And both of them are consistently under contention. And then although you are born again, you find out that you are still involved in masturbation and certain things. You may not tell people, but this has contentions. You are praying about it. I'm showing you the progression. Then you begin to see every kind of thing. When you are praying before God and you are praying in tongues, you begin to see God brings out the state of your heart. Envy, lust, jealousy. You say, Lord, me? Me? I'm a new creation. I'm born again. But then you are seeing your old man. Cain is alive and strong. Wrestling with Abel. And because Cain is the elder brother of Abel. That flesh, it had gained dominance in your mind. Now Abel wants to come and take his place. And so there is a contention. Are you listening to me? The old man does not want to give way. The old man does not want to give way. And then Satan gives you an alternative. He said, look, there is something called the grace of God and God's mercy. Why don't you wrap yourself around that revelation and let everything go? And so you are laughing. You are saying, hallelujah. All things are working well. But you sleep in the night and people come and press you and sleep with you. You get up in the morning and it's not a problem. 
you will never tell anybody you're just smiling but these are questions you are asking and say what is wrong with my new creation status and god is saying no it's a journey your mind is giving room for satan to find expression in your life and you are unable to lay down everything are you listening to me you love god it does not mean you are a devil don't let anybody condemn you but you must not condone your state you must do something about it hallelujah you never believed you could steal one day in the heat of hunger you just saw 100 naira wanting to take it the holy ghost told you it's your roommate's own you can't say you didn't hear him and he said lord the flesh contending with the spirit and he said does it really matter lord if i ask her she will give me so what's the difference god is saying ask them because there is a protocol in the spirit and you just whistle and squeeze out and carry the hundred naira. you buy bonds and you eat and god keeps quiet it does not mean he's endorsing you he's only encouraging you because a time will come his light will shine in that area of your life while men slept the enemy planted tears among the wheat and the people who were with the husband man said should we begin to walk he said no in the process of pruning it you will remove some things so let them grow there is a level you get to then god will say all right about this issue of masturbation it's been two years and uh, although you have been healing the sick like, can we deal with it now he said oh i'm a new creation what kind of embarrassment is this oh lord don't bring up this issue and Satan begins to give you an excuse. We have a church that is so dignified and we cannot open up ourselves before God because we think it's an act of weakness. Can I tell you something, friends? If you must grow and be truth, if, if, if you must grow and be mature and stand in truth, then you must open up your heart and let the Holy Spirit examine your mind and prune out everything that does not conform to Christ. Hallelujah. While that is happening, you will seem to be standing in one place in your journey. Other people have started ministry since they are going. They are already on air. You are there cleaning out a lot of things. Are you listening to me? Because God is saying the kind of army I need to present. And your colleague who you started laboring in the spirit together has seven branches now. And the guy looks at you and says, "Are you? there's an urgency in the spirit. Let's run. The harvest is wide. And he said, are you prepared? Guys, are you joking? Meanwhile, his choir ladies cannot rest again. Because the realm of the spirit does not know whether you are apostle or prophet. And so in the middle of the teachings, what happens? Cain, you look at a beautiful lady, patience. How? And then you are preaching. And then Cain says, this side again. And you look and you say, I have a prophetic word for you. Now, it's not your fault. You love the Lord. But you did not stay sufficient for the Holy Ghost to begin to take over your mind. So, although you are prophesying, suddenly, you are a prophet and you notice that Sam is the general manager of a bank. And by prophetic insight, you are giving access to his account number. Say, Sam, stand up. While you say stand up, the message that is coming from God is that you walk steadfastly, but you add command to where God stops and Cain rides out with the prophecy. He said, more so, God is telling you to drop an amount. And because of the accuracy of your delivery, you are consoled and you think it is God. Are you listening to me? And so based on it, you open a ministry, but then you find out that there are many things although before people you are great in the spirit you weigh very small because you have refused to stay in the spirit and then your members begin to contend for truth and they come to a point where they begin to discern that something is wrong although these guys anointed and have the gift of the spirit we do not see the character that represents the posture of a matured man in the spirit then you begin to come up with all kinds of rules be quiet and don't challenge authority whatever we give you 
God will not talk to you people except he comes to us. Have you had teachings like that? That's lack of fire in progress, brothers. Because the Bible is very explicitly clear. Mm, this is what you get in Koinonia. We want us to be strong. Listen, I trust the Lord that the least person among us will be as strong as David. We won't lie to you. That's why we hold miracle services. Is that correct? And you come, we don't bug you with all these things. We just pray. But when it comes to building, watch me. There was a day, now I'm careful to say this, some years ago, the Lord told me that I should not open my Bible for one week. And I did not understand. Could that be the spirit of the Lord or not? But I eventually found out that it was God. And God gave me the reason. He said, son, every meeting that happens, you are going. Like many of you are here with your notebooks. It takes something in your head to be the head. You know how Bishop Oedeko writes powerful statements. Take something in your head to be the head. Now he's writing. You are jotting. He's speaking from a depth of revelation. You just want Rema. And he said, boy, if I preach on this in my Thursday fellowship, they will know that I'm not an ordinary person. Now you are getting these things. He's speaking from the bowels of the spirit. But it came to you just as knowledge. Rema, are you listening to me? And now you are writing it. And God told me, he said, son, you have gotten many things that can move you forward, but you are not moving forward. You are junking your head with knowledge. Close your Bible and let's begin to bring you into the experience of these revelations that you had. So I didn't say, you see, it's my unique dealing. That's why I can't write a book about it. Are you listening to me? And God began to open me up. I remember that's when God began to teach me on character. Look, let me tell you, I was walking in the anointing of the spirit in a way you cannot imagine. Praise God. And the Holy Spirit asked me, this is the experiential dealing now. I'm teaching you how the Holy Ghost trains you. He begins to subject you through personalized experience that only you can tell. The only thing is when you share the experience with another person, you will find out that although the, the patterns of dealings are different according to what he wants you to become, but you see that there is a similarity of objectives, what he's trying to achieve. Praise God. And the Holy Ghost made me to draw a diagram of the fruit of the Spirit versus their manifestation in my life. Personalized dealings. He is training me. He is now giving life to the head knowledge I've had of Scripture. I knew it so well. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace. I knew this in, right from Sunday school. But now there was, it was now time for the reality. And let me tell you something. For the first time in my life, my ego was stung to my knees. I was shocked to find out that less than 10% of the fruit of the Spirit was alive and walking. Although I was anointed, although we were praying for people, although we had gone for crusades, I said, ah, Lord, you have to help me. Thank God it's only me and you that is seeing this thing. Let's flog it out right now. Are you listening to me? Do not be embarrassed when God calls you to your knees as a general, it's not a symbol of shame. He's pruning you to lift you. So don't be embarrassed to find out that there is an issue you need to flog out in your life. Don't let religion lie to you and say it's all over. Walk out that soteria, that salvation with fear, reverence for God and with trembling because it has consequences if you leave it. Hallelujah. And when I began to do that, I saw improvement in my life. And people were happy. When I went for ministration, they said, we have a very humble servant of God. And I could imagine the Holy Spirit saying, now you are you not enjoying the blessings? I thought that was over. Later on again, he said, there's part two of that character dealing. And he gave me another dealing. And I found out I failed flawlessly. Although you people can see me and say, wow, great man of God. It's only me and God that knows the dealings and the levels. Are you listening to me? Many preachers will not tell you this because they stand as omniscient, omnipotent, and omni-whatever. 
and let me tell you if they don't take steps they will be embarrassed because the realm of the spirit has no apology for what your members call you you begin to contend for the experience listen and in that contention you begin to know the holy ghost are you listening to me you begin to know the holy ghost there are certain promptings of the spirit that come upon me to know the kinds of anointings that are in a place i cannot teach you i can only explain it's my personalized dealing in the place of prayer there is a way and a manner that the holy ghost moves upon me that i know that i've hidden something in the spirit and i know that this prayer has been answered are you listening to me there is a way i can sense danger If somebody wants to call me maybe to pray for the sick sometimes few minutes before that time i suddenly sense the anointing of the spirit and i sense the presence of healing angels how did i learn that the experiential dealings of the spirit this is how a believer grows one day you are praying suddenly your tongues begin to change that's your first time of encountering it and then you are saying what is happening suddenly i found out that i cannot even talk again i'm voicing but i'm not speaking these are questions the holy ghost is luring you deeper with these experiences people may reject it but you know suddenly you you are praying and you begin to sense the presence of people you know that you are not alone in that room and now your spirit is being trained it's a customized dealing this is not the type there are many of you while i'm speaking right now the first time i was speaking you were caught up in the spirit you didn't even know that it was a spiritual experience suddenly you found out that we're sharing the grace and you just smiled you went back home quietly and then you ended that dealing instead of you to begin to contend with the spirit Every time you prayed, you would lie down and see something that will happen exactly the next day. You trivialized it, but after seeing it two or three times, the Holy Ghost is saying, this is part of the tools you will need as my army. And so begin to take note of it. I sleep with notebooks. I sleep with my Bible, my notebooks, and my pen. Because at every time, you see, so you begin to walk with the Spirit. And you come to a point where you can look at someone and be able to help the person out of the abundance of your experiences are you listening to me the atmosphere of your spirit is alive now your mind begins to submit gradually but surely to the lordship of the spirit you begin to imbibe his word his word now the the holy spirit begins to orchestrate occasions that will make the word be living and active in your life so it's no longer just a logos here it has become true are you listening to me and then one time you will have cause and your father or your mother will not send you money and the holy ghost will say i want to show you a dimension of me that is accessible i want to train you and build you and then he says now depend on me get up and go to your friend's room as you are stepping into your friend's room you see him with an envelope of five thousand he says the lord was leading me and you say so that dealing i thought was my mind was the holy ghost you are growing there is a progression are you listening to me there is a progression suddenly you sit down and you sense guys something is wrong and you just tell your colleague let's pray let's pray five minutes later they call and they say someone had a ghastly motor accident and he would have died and god said note that impression i will make reference to it again your customized dealings with the spirit this is how a christian becomes a mature person because over time you begin to gather these things and the holy ghost begins to shed light and he begins to teach you so prayer becomes exciting not because you want to go and do religion you anticipate a new experience and so you are praying and wondering what next will the holy ghost do suddenly you are praying on your own the next thing you wake up and find out that you were on the floor when you fell you did not know you thought you were too praying but suddenly you found out that you had been in a vision for a long time and you said lord what what is going on in my life the dealings are you learning something please then you begin to pray then you begin to build there are times that you are sleeping and god gives you a dream and you get up 
and there is no direct application of that dream in your life the dream was an explosion of your mind and your spirit to acclimatize with the dealings of god so that scripture will now begin to make sense based on the things you have visualized in your dreams so you find yourself walking on water and in that dream a lot of people say mommy water calm down don't just call everything satan You find yourself walking with Jesus on water in a dream. He's giving you the feeling so that when you come back and open that scripture, light that never entered you will now enter you. There are times in the dream you see yourself laying hands on the sick and you have the feeling of victory, the manifestation of faith. And every time God will preserve that memory in your mind so that the next time you see somebody in a wheelchair, you have that same feeling and it will, end, it will help the anointing to flow in your life and suddenly for the first time it will be like a dream are you following me tonight the dealings of the spirit bringing the knowledge of God into the experience of God for you then you begin to speak you are understanding the operations of the spirit Now when you stand to preach, listen, you will not just talk as if you are talking. Your convictions are getting stronger. Listen, when you experience God, that's the only condition that you can die for him. It's not by confession. Are you listening to me? Stand up, sweetheart, my dear. Look at me. If I call you a man, what will you do about it? There are too many experiences in your life that have crystallized in your spirit, soul, and body that you are a lady. Is that correct? For instance, men don't wear with on except there's something wrong with them. Except there is a drastic shortage of the dealings of the spirit in their lives. Please sit down. Now, this is a lady. If you give birth to a baby, listen, do you know if you separate a baby from any other person and you keep telling that baby you are a boy you are a boy although she's a lady she will grow up knowing and thinking and acting like a man because the first experience she receives is on account of what you are speaking to her are you listening to me that's why god designed the trainings of ladies and men to be such that no man can deceive another When the guy becomes a teenager suddenly his voice is getting husky final betrayal nothing can deceive him that he's a lady and then he sees mustache on his face uh, all these things begin to tell him look mr man you are not a lady and then what are they doing there are memories in his mind and then he comes to a point where he's convinced and he can die believing that he's a man such that when americans are saying right now uh, there are factors we need to look at to ascertain whether a man is a man or a woman. You say you are on your own. I know and I am persuaded that I am a man. This is how it must be. But when you do not walk with the spirit, and this is the ministry of the fivefold, to bring us to a point where we create the roadmap. Listen, what we do is we plant and we water, but it's your dealings with God that brings increase in your life. Are you listening to me? Our job is to open up a portal and lead you and say go. And then you begin to experience certain dimensions of God. You have been reading every time. The Bible talks about tithing. And then you have been saying wow. If they ask you in Sunday school, you answer discipleship, you answer. CRS, you answer and you do very well. And then one day God begins to tell you, all right, you've been reading this thing. When will you put it to work? experience knowledge translating into experience now you come out here and stand and you drop the tithe and listen to me god will oftentimes cause the result to happen instantly so that you can see the difference you are just dropping it and the next time it may not happen like that all the time this is what happens to new converts every prayer is answered before they pray to be answered and they're like man this christianity that means most christians are lazy then one day you pray and it's not answered that fast and God will say, all right, uh, I was just helping you to be encouraged. So that should, in case you don't get an answered prayer, you know you once had one and you can follow me. Then he begins to teach you. 
You want to have you seen many believers who say, I just got saved, I got filled with the Holy Spirit, I started praying for the sick immediately, and truly they were healed. Ask them after five years whether they continued. It was a motivation. God is smart, He knows how to encourage you. It was a bonus to encourage you that look, you are seeing believers praying and fasting. You didn't pray, you didn't fast. Rema just came. And you say, if this is how it is, then I can be a preacher. And then one day you are starved of revelation. The Bible becomes a blank page from Genesis to Revelation. And then he begins to teach you the principle of receiving from the Spirit. Then you begin to honor the people you have once criticized. And say, oh, I respect your fasting. You no, know, you are not wasting your time. A body that becomes matured not just in knowledge but in experience that's why i like our mothers they have gone through childbirth they have escaped accidents so whenever they are talking about the faithfulness of god no matter whether they are not concerned whether i can place well or not you just raise a song even if it's oh come oh ye faithful they just close their eyes because it's a reflection of their experience they have come to know God. When they were giving birth to the third child, they almost died. And they called on his name and he brought salvation. So whenever they read and they say, the Lord is my strength and my light, they have an experience that can relate to that knowledge. And for them, it's not waste. Hmm. Are you listening to me? A woman who has five children and four died in an accident. And then, see... This is one of the reasons why when you hear a man who has experienced God, when he speaks, you will cry because he's speaking from the depth of his experience. I remember listening to Reverend Dr. Umau cry. Lost his children after a crusade. After a crusade, his children drowned and died. He had to start a new family again. So when he reads the book of Job and Job said, though he slay me, he will say yes, because there is an experience. He has gotten that dimension of God and nobody will take it away. Have you gotten the experience for the revelations you are shouting about? For that may be the missing link. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And you come to a point where you experience certain things. Don't waste your experiences. Let the Holy Ghost use them as a training ground to make you mature. That's why the Bible says, count it all joy when you face diverse temptations. Knowing that the trying of your faith will produce patience. And let patience have its full course. There is an end. It will make you become something. When you come to Koinonia, there are different kinds of worshippers. Those who have experienced what the worship people are singing. Are you following me now? That's why when who raised worship, Sam, come. If Sam, if Sam comes to stand here and sing and say, um, Lord, I give you my heart. If there is no experience to validate that revelation, you will know because there is an absence of truth. Have your way in me. Lord, even if he's kneeling down, you just know that there is a separation between this man and the spirit of this song. And experience has not brought it into light. Hallelujah. But if you waited 10 years before getting admission, and he said, Lord, I love you. And he says, Lord, I give you my heart. You cannot explain it may not even be his voice his experience is doing something to your spirit deep is calling on to deep have your way in me that's why he can compose other versions and not care about what you are thinking because those versions relate to his experience when he, that's why you see when whenever we say sing in the spirit or express yourself to the lord some people just stand it's not your fault You've never had to look for school fees by yourself. You've never had to trust God for his faithfulness. You've never had to. You are too innocent. There is no experience. So the Bible is just like a book and you just know the memory verses. But somebody whose, whose name came out in that list has an experience about the faithfulness of God. 
somebody whose mother was almost dying of childbirth and they had to come together praying day and night knows that there are demons in the village and that prayer can conquer satan so while you are talking english on stage that revelation the memory of the times he had to spend to travel that memory is too deep for your deceits to just take him out that becomes a platform for a healthy prayer life so right now your prayer life is not founded upon intimidation from your colleagues there is an experience that has provoked you to the place of prayer and you know you must remain there as a matter of life and death hallelujah and then the bible have you ever had certain experiences and then some songs you used to listen to that don't make sense later make sense and then you just feel like listening to Don when you have criticized his keyboard suddenly makes sense to you he never sleeps and that and you begin to cry it's an experience that is making you grow because out of that experience the word of god will now come alive are you getting blessed please so it's not enough to write god is telling you to write all those things in your notebook because the day the experiences of your life will bring you into the knowledge of that aspect of God. You will appreciate what you have written. That's why when you hear some people talking, you see, you see pastors standing up. They are touched by the statement. And the members are saying, what nonsense is this? The day you start running your own church, after three years, you will stand up for every man that says what they said that you were just watching. Because for four weeks after you begin to pastor the four weeks is full of crisis that you have to settle and you say lord did you call me so next time you are seeing somebody say god is faithful and the man of god is relating it to his pain his pain has become a message that helps him to understand what the holy spirit can do in the in a man's life this is how believers become matured and if this is not taught in the body of christ we are going to have a crippled people are you listening to me so you get up based on these experiences my wallet has been missing for a long time if it was before i called it forth called it forth it didn't come i said lord look i have i have better things to pray about i have a, a family of believers we need to train but remember one time i gave you a story that an angel came and brought it i prayed i said where is that angel hallelujah the rigor of going to atm activities right now and all the things there but when your heart is with god anything that leaves you cannot it only creates more space for him to feel so you see a believer walk and you are wondering how do people live like this they just sat your father and he comes back dancing and you are like daddy are you joking my school fees he says don't worry i don't know what will happen but i remember in 1975 a similar thing happened and there was a song that i sang many of you don't have experiences that you can fetch this is why testimony is important when you give testimony you give people a tool that they can use to fight satan tomorrow and then you become a matured christian hallelujah kenneth hagin went through all kinds of sicknesses that wanted to kill him so when he stands ministering to people god brings that memory and out of that memory comes compassion and from that compassion the anointing will flow you've not had any experience that's why you say this miracle service said why are people always falling the day you have their kind of disease you will value our ministry hallelujah why must you prophesy you are wasting our time jerry the day your father looks at you and says, now you have become an adult fend for yourself you will know whether you have believed god or not and then you you will begin to sing songs including jesus loves me this i know for the bible tells me so now it will not be special number an experience has compelled you to appreciate that revelation of the word to the point that whenever you read john 3 16 you can start crying on stage people are saying john 3 16 it's not about the verse it has made you to know the holy spirit in a certain way that you wouldn't know him 
This is how the ancient were dealt with by God. Certain experiences open certain dimensions of God. And so they knew that God was certain things and they died believing it. What do you believe about God? How have your experiences helped you to come into the knowledge, the experiential knowledge of God? Some of the dealings of God in our lives is what has given us audacity to be able to stand and declare certain things. And you watch and say, how old are these people that they speak with such audacity? It's not about the age. It's the depth of the experiences. While I was traveling back today, I was thinking about the person. He came all the way from, I think, Yobe, Saleh. Where is he? Please come. The Lord will begin with you tonight. Please ushers, position yourself inside and outside because there will be a rain in this place. Hallelujah. Listen. You will be set free. Where did you come from? Please, technical, can you help us? Where did you come from? Bauchi State. Okay, from Bauchi. Yes. I want you to know that God will do a miracle in your life. Amen. You believe that? Yes, I believe. You came full of faith. Yes. The Lord will set you free right now. Amen. By the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the name of the Lord Jesus. That devil. Come out of him right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus, just breathe in and out. Breathe in and out. I set you free right now. At the power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Now, listen. Listen. Please. I want to see those who have heart conditions. You came here. Hear me outside, please. We don't have time to waste we are not going to have to mention cases individually. But when, when we call your case, please run out. We are going to pray and see as far as God wants to finish fast so that we will end quickly. Heart conditions. Leave your seat and come out here quickly. Either a hole in the heart or an abnormal heart formation. Quickly, quickly. Appreciate them as they line up here. Ushers coordinate them. Heart conditions. Please come and line up here quickly. That devil is a liar. Heart condition. Growing up, they told you you have a heart condition. Come out and line up here. Come out and line up here. No matter how old you are or how young you are. Please line up. Line up. Straight line. Rakata baladabash. Line up, ushers, direct them, help them. Hallelujah. As you're standing here, I'd like you to wait by by to it. Because I know the unction of the spirit is here. God will set you free. Baba, God will set you free, sir. And everyone. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now, sirs, we'll minister quickly. We'll just minister to them. Hallelujah. Praise God. I tell you, there is an unusual unction in this place. As hands are laid on you. Hallelujah. Return back thanking the Lord and check. If you are still seated in the crowd and you know you have a heart condition, don't sit back there. God wants to change your story. Hallelujah. There's someone who has an unusual palpitation i don't know what it is you the way you the way you breathe sometimes is literally holding you and choking you you are the one look at me because it's a devil of darkness your own is not just sickness look at me in the name of jesus i command that devil of darkness let her go in the name of jesus 
in the name of Jesus. Let her go. 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 You are a devil of darkness. Come out. Come out. Come out of her now. Come out of her now. In the name of Jesus. Out of her. Come. My sister, you too. Come. Some of you that are standing. As hands are laid, you will find out that it was in sickness. My dear, God will set you free right now. Because your own is an oppression. Look at me. You, are you listening to me? There is a devil that has oppressed this girl. You will go. 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 Go in the name of Jesus. The name of Jesus. Greater than any other name. Something is leaving you. I'm seeing a dark object coming out of you. Come out of her now. Sister, look at me. I'll pray for you. God will set you free. You believe that? Now thou foul devil, let this girl go round by the power of the Holy Ghost. Go! 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 Let her go in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I say you won't hide. Come on, I see you in the spirit. Go out of her in the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. John Capitalist, Minister Jakes, Bishop. Let's begin to as they lay hands, they will speak to your life. Don't just think they are laying hands. Hallelujah. Please stand. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. As hands are laid, begin to pray while you're standing. Out of him now. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Be healed now. I curse that devil of darkness. Go. 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 Be healed in the name of Jesus. Come out of her now. Come out of her. Come out of her. Come out of her. Come out of her. Out of her. Out of her. Right, devil of darkness. Come out of her in the name of Jesus. Let him go. Let him go now. Let him go. Let him go. Go. Be healed. Sister, I curse that devil. Because I also see oppression in your sleep. That demon of darkness. Go in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus made whole right now be made whole oh God is not done with you God is not done with you be healed in the name of Jesus as you go back to your seat check yourself be healed right now be healed right now be healed right now be healed right now in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus. Come out of her now. Come out of her. Come out of her. By the fire of the Holy Ghost. Out of her right now. In the name of Jesus. What's wrong? Be made free right now. In the name of Jesus. Be free right now. In the name of Jesus. Set you free. Set free right now. From every oppression. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Now, only outside, not inside. All of you outside, lift your hands. Not those inside. Please, those inside. 
lift your hands those outside at the count of three i want you to shout the name jesus the fire of god will terminate the works of darkness so many of you are under influences of the devil hallelujah only those outside at the count of three as you shout the power of god comes upon you one two three let the fire fall i curse devils i curse demons go 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 bring them in ushers go go let the fire fall bring them in bring them in the fire fall all across the building outside all across fire is falling those outside one more time those outside shout jesus in power in power in power at the back outside at the back in power in power the fire of the holy ghost outside 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 god is not gone lift your hands i release fire 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 take it take it outside take it outside for this purpose was the son of God I see two ladies sitting in the same row outside the fire of God comes upon you now right now that oppression over your life two ladies sitting in the same room look at me we've not finished so we've not finished if it's possible if it's possible the ministers are going to separate themselves into three and walk across the crowd outside no devil will survive today brother i see a serpent not a man come out of him now out of him now that devil of darkness come out of him come out of him i see a snake not a man come out of him come out of him come out of him Fire I'm seeing a snake, not a human being. You see the way he's behaving? Look at what he's doing. The fire of the Holy Ghost 
upon you come out of him in the name of Jesus the fire of the Holy Ghost upon you the fire of the Holy Ghost upon you leave him leave him go 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 as you touch me you touch fire the fire of the Holy Ghost upon you the fire of the Holy Ghost come out of him he must be free come out of him Come out of him now. Come out of him. 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 Come out of Come out of him now. Fire upon you. Fire upon you. Fire upon you. Out, out, out. Out, out. In the name of Jesus. Listen to me. Hold on. I set you free. The fire of the Holy Ghost. Leave him. Look at, he's free. Look up. Look at this gentleman. Someone who came oppressed of the devil. Brother, you are free in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Pick him up. Stand up, my brother. Look at, see, he's even surprised. Look at. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Look at me. Look at me. Do you know when you came out here? Where were you? You came outside. Help me with the mic. What's your name? Samuel. Eh? Samuel. Where are you coming from? Danaka. Look at this guy. Outside. He doesn't even know that he's here. Look at him surprised, looking at everybody. The Lord perfect you and set you free. Where was the lady you were praying for? Pray, this lady. See, I see an old woman. That's what I'm seeing. Turn this lady. I see a very old woman. Come on now. Come out of her. Come out of her. You're not done. Come out of her. Come out now. She lay down as though it's done. You are not done. You are spiritual people here. Out of her now. Out of her by the power of the Holy Ghost. Come out of her right now. That foul devil. In Jesus name. Leave her alone. She's free. Look at. You. What's wrong with this woman? Who brought her? Please, if you brought someone, make sure you stand close to the person. Who brought mama? Who are you? Come. Well done. What's her name? Lydia. What's wrong with her? She has been bleeding for the past three years now. For the past three years. Look at. She had she had what? Dislocation on her shoulder. She could Since when? Mama, she can she talk? Yes, I can. Mama, how are you? I'm well. Well done, eh? What's the issue? Oh, this hand now is dislocated. Yes, it was since December last year. December? And that I went to the toilet on my way coming back. Something you see? From my you, face always, like you always know the signature of Satan when you see it. I'm not so, teaching you to be demon conscious. I was back, I'm just I telling just you that. Myself on the ground. You did what? I said on my way coming back. I found my on the way from the toilet. Yes. How old are you, mama? I'm 51. 51. I found myself sitting on the ground. You not found yourself I, sitting on the ground. Not that, I don't know how it, uh, it happened. Not that I fell down flat. So. And, okay, come. You are her daughter. Let, let her talk. I was taken to just to this, that it's not stroke. Because immediately it happened. My left hand and left leg seized. Your left leg right now is not moving. No, it's moving. What of your right hand? The what is wrong with it? No, nothing happened. It's only the left leg and the left hand that seized immediately. Then I was rushed to the hospital. So the bleeding will stop. No, and no. The case of the bleeding is different from. I was taken to the hospital that it was cancer of the womb. Cancer of the womb. Yes. You still have it. 
Yes. It's going to go. This is what I'm so, saying. That it was not stroke, that it was partial stroke. It was what? Partial stroke. Partial stroke. Then the following day, I was in the hospital for two weeks. I, I know I told them the doctor that I want him to discharge me. I want to go for prayer. So I went to, for prayer in Nosarawa State. So the, the following day in in the prayer house. It's I time move, for you I to move, go. I go, move. go, go, go. Out of her now. Out of her now. Now in the name of Jesus. That devil. Out of her now. Fire on you. Fire on you. In the name of Jesus. Fire upon you. Go, go, go. Go. Sorry, mama. So I move my leg. So I Okay, what, what, is, what, okay, so what is wrong with you right now? What, what did now, you come with right the now? Of the womb. Cancer of the womb. We are bleeding. Then, your uh, hand. The hand. These are the two conditions. Now that I fell and flat, so I discovered that I have dislocation on my shoulder. So, okay, it's all right. The hand has been fixed locally, but up to now I couldn't move the hand. But I'll pray for you. I'll pray for you. Yes. All right. Can you feel my hands? Can you feel my hands? Yes. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. My God, do wonders in this hand right now. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Perfect this hand. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. That devil of darkness, your hold is taken from my hands. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. fingers. Yes. Every pain go. I command you to go. You are of the spirit of darkness. I challenge you. Try lifting it up. Lift both of your hands up. Try it. Just try lifting your hands up. Can you? Try lifting it up. In the name of Jesus. You feel pains? You feel pains where? Your shoulder. By the power of the Holy Spirit, begin to move it more. In the name of Jesus, begin to move it. Start moving it. Start moving it. Start moving it. Start moving it. In the name of Jesus, I cast that devil. I cast that devil. Can you wind your hand? Try and wind this hand. Just look at me. Look at me. out blood I'm seeing someone that coughs out blood you cough all the time you cough out blood please hurry up you cough out blood literally who is the person inside are they hearing me outside quickly if you identify that person let the person come you cough out blood literally come out
please clear the way for them. Ah, look at oppression. This is what I'm seeing. Come on now, get out of her. Out of her now. Out of her now. Out of her in the name of Jesus. Out of her now. Out of her, thou devil of darkness. I curse you by the power of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus. Not only this lady, but the members of her family have been oppressed. Lay your hands on her chest. In the name of Jesus, I curse that power of darkness. Be free. Totally. Now. In the name of Jesus. Since when? For the past two weeks. For the past two weeks. Have you gone to the hospital? Can I pray for you? You believe Jesus will lay your hands on your chest. You will feel a fiery sensation upon your chest right now. Now you hear my voice. Let her go. 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 Hallelujah. Those of you inside, lift your hands. I'm going to ask the cymbal to clash and the string play. Listen, when that happens, the fire of the spirit will move across anyone here under any oppression of darkness. You must go. This is not a negotiation. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. At the count of three, begin to clash the cymbal. One, two, three. Kashatabata. Go, 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 go. I stretch my hand by the power of the spirit. Take it, take it, take it, take it. Devils go. Satan be exposed. Satan be exposed. For this purpose was the Son of God. Satan be exposed. Light shine. I release fire. 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 fire upon this congregation. Fire. 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 Fire upon you. Fire. Bring them out. Bring them out. Fire. 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 You can't stand it. No devil can stand it. Fire. Bring them out. Bring them out. The fire of the Holy Ghost.
The fire is burning. The fire is burning. You can't stand it. Satan, go, go. It's time for God's people to go. It's time for destinies to be open. It's time for what has made you to cry to end. Bring them out. Hey, I see you in the spirit. Leave her. Leave her. Go. 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 I see you in the spirit. Out of her. Out of her. Out of her. Out of her. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are free in Jesus' name. Bring me a mic. I do these things to teach you a lesson. Madam, stand up. No, 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 not her. Not her. You are a devil of darkness. For how do you think you can hide in the presence of God's light? Look at me. Bring the mic for me. You are not gone completely, oh. You are a devil of darkness. Out of her now. On your mark, get set, go. Go, 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 go. Out of her. Come out of her now. Come out of her now. Come out of her now. Fire upon you. Fire upon you. Fire upon you. As you touch me, you touch fire. As you touch me, you touch the fire of the spirit. He make it is out of her now. Out, 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 out. Come out of her now. She's free. In the name of Jesus. It will not stand fire from my hands to your head. If I be a servant of God, you stand around fire in the name of Jesus. Come out of her. This woman's destiny has been tied down. Lord, who is the person? Let the fire of God catch up with the person right now. God shows me this room. There's one person. My hands. Let the fire of the spirit separate that person. Now. 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 Stand up, madam. <laughs> Don't feel embarrassed. Calm down. Hallelujah. Look at me. Look at me. Look at me. I want you to look at me. Look at my eyes. Look at my eyes. See, this woman has suffered. You just see someone walking. Things are not going right. People speak all kinds of grammar. And Satan is advancing. Mama, please come. Jangfa is going to speak to you. I sense, please, Mama. You are free. Take her outside. 
I see her coughing, whatever. Please take her outside for God's sake so we don't litter this place. Take her outside. I don't know if it's poison or whatever it is that she took. Take her outside. You're still not out. Go out, go out, go out now. Out, go out. Go out in the name of Jesus. Go out of her. Go out of her. Come. Place your hand on this lady's chest. Out of her. Come out of her now. I release fire upon you. Foul devil. Out of her. Patata kapa. Rakata posa tali. Rekete kete kete. Le gronto zopo rotata. Riata la kosiaba. Alright, your reign in this life is over. On your mark, set, go. 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 You can't stand it. Go. 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 I prophesy to you today after today your life will begin to move as if Satan does not exist Amen. are you listening to me every oppression those outside hear me every oppression challenging your family through the greatness of the power that is in the name of Jesus that challenge will bow don't let her go bring her back come sweetheart look at me just look at me. Look at my eyes. Look at my eyes. Just keep looking. Look at my eyes. Look at my eyes. I'm seeing your father's face on your face. Look at my eyes. Just look. For she will go free. The children shall not suffer the iniquity of their fathers. Right now, you and the spirit of death upon her get lost get lost get lost get lost Up your heads, O oh ye gates, be ye lifted, O oh ye ancient doors, and the King of Glory will come in. in Jesus' name, you're free. Come, Mama, bring that lady who is falling. See, tonight, many of you, you will go back rejoicing. He who has the Son, has it We have the Son, so we have it. Lay your hands on her stomach. Out. 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 In the name of Jesus.
what is it? Cancer. Who said so? The doctors. Lay your hands there. Lay. Kisa. Interpreter. Selina. Where is she? She's walking. Tell her Jesus. Okay. Okay. Tell her Jesus Christ is going to heal her right now. See, she's crying. See. Tell her Jesus will heal her now. Is she looking at you? Look at her. Tell her, Mama, Jesus will heal you. Look at, look at, look at this. 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 This is somebody's mother. This is somebody's mother. of you outside, I want you to know that Jesus is in this place. There is someone I need in this room. The devil has oppressed you. And the Holy Ghost spoke to me. He said, come out. Two of you, all of you in this room, lift your hands. That devil is a liar. As I, I shout the name of Jesus, the fire of God will come. People, please let me in the mighty name of Jesus. I release fire right now. My father locates those two people right now in the name of Jesus. Let the fire of God fall, fall, fall. Two of them, two of them. There's one already, two of them. Fall. Shatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatat
go. Time up. Time up. This lady is heavily oppressed. Out of her. Out oh, devil of darkness. You came for koinonia. You're welcome. Out of her in the name of Jesus. Stand up. Pick him up. Fire on you right now. It's time. It's time. It's time. You must go. Go. Bring him. You must go. This lady has been so tight. Now, listen. I need to explain something to you. Please follow me. It's not the people. Listen. It doesn't mean they are possessed with demons. Are you listening to me? So get that clear so that you don't carry your big mouth and start talking stories around. There are three levels of manifestation of Satan. Some of them are acutely possessed with demons. Some of them, devils influence their lives and destinies. So the fact that they are manifesting like they are possessed does not mean they are possessed. Are you hearing what I'm saying? That's why they don't even know. Pick him up. Kai, this guy has been so oppressed of the devil. This lady has dreams and she meets with people. Go out of her. Go out of her. Just let him, let him lie down when he's ready to stand up. This guy is so weak. He doesn't even know that he has been under all kinds of bondages of Satan. Who prayed? Let me pray for you. Mama, you believe Jesus has authority over cancer? You do? Because he's going to go. Oh yes, it will go. Hmm? Lay your hands there. See, I, I'm touching it. It's looking like a stone. Out of her! Out of her! Out of her! Devil of darkness is not cancer, it's a spirit. Go out of her now. Go out of her now. Go out of her now. He was the son, has it and Hallelujah. Mama, who brought Mama out? Eh? I said, who is Grace? Oh, I was actually talking about some. Bring the man or the wheelchair and on crutches. Let him come and stand here. Please, if we have not called your case, don't just come out. We'll give room for that. But let him stand. Sir, please, can you come and minister to this woman for time's sake? Bring him here. Sir, you're welcome. Look at me. What's wrong with you? Accident. On which leg? This leg. What's wrong with the leg? Operation. Operation. Yes. They did surgery and it's not working. You want to walk? Yes. You believe Jesus will set you free? Clear the way for him. He was the son. The name of the Lord Jesus. Look at me. You believe in Jesus Christ? Can you walk without with it? Are you feeling pains? Yes. Where? What of this leg? Look at me. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I set you free. I command your leg to straighten out. In the name of Jesus Christ. Look at me. Walk. Come, follow me. Follow me. Can you walk? Try it. Just take a step and see. What's wrong with the legs? It's heavy. Ah, where? But can you bend it like this? Try and bend it. Go ahead. In the name of Jesus. 
in the name of Jesus. Could you do this before? Could you do this before? God is healing you. Keep moving it. Move it. Move it. You just do what I'm telling you to do. Move it. Move it. Now move it like this. Move it like this. Move it like this. Move it like this. Can we try and walk now? Hold this one. Hold my hands. Walk. Let's walk. Let's walk. Let's walk. Try and match it down. Is it because of the metal? There's a metal inside his leg. So it's limiting him from walking. Hallelujah. So they must remove the metal. They can't, oh, they put it here permanently. Say permanent. Lord, let this metal become his bones. Amen. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. This metal Amen. Melt away. Amen. move across the crowd. We don't have time. Go ahead. Okay, Janfa is already ministering. Some people outside just move and minister to people. Join them, Kenny. Someone should take on this road. Vivian. I'm hearing the name Vivian. Pastor, sir. Yes. Vivian. Who is Vivian? A fair lady called Vivian. No, no, a fair lady called Vivian. The Lord is showing me a fair lady called Vivian. Vivian. Sister, stand up. Look at me. Look at my eyes. Look at my eyes. Look at my eyes. Look at my eyes. Thou foul devil. Go! 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 In Jesus' name, be set free. Leave I alone. Vivian. What's wrong with you? Eh? People come to you and oppress you in a dream. Is that correct? Do you know me? Have, you, have I talked with you before? You want to be free? You'll be free right now. John, it's time for you to enter God's plan and purpose for your life. Are you listening to me? Because you are not supposed to be a photographer. Are you listening to me? You are supposed to have gone far beyond this level. God didn't just bring you to Koinonia to snap. Please take the, photo, the camera. Victor can snap, so be doing it in the interim. You believe what I'm telling you? Uh -huh, because I see that how many people drink in your family? Tell the truth and shame the devil. How many? Two people, sir. You and who? I don't drink, sir. Again, yes, sir. you used to drink. Yes, sir. Have you stopped yes, sir. completely? Yes, sir. Praise God. But the Lord will set you free. Hmm? Because in your family, women. Uh -uh. You believe that? Eh? See, let me tell you the truth. This is not your destiny in Christ. This happened as a result of frustration. Is that correct? Many things. School didn't work. Many things happened. Even Waiek, you don't even have your complete result. Is that true? Help me. Is that true? That's true? God will set you free. Hallelujah. You believe that? I want to speak into your destiny and call it forth into where God wants you to be. That devil is a liar. Come out of him now. Come out of him. I release your glorious destiny. The days of oppression are over. Rise up beyond the photographer. Become the leader 
and the entrepreneur that God has destined for you to be. See, listen. It's not that this guy is lazy. Oh. I hope you know that. It's not that he's lazy. Ella, come. Abigail, come. Wumi, come. Three of you, come and stand here. For the sake of your families. The time has come. Out of her. Come out of her now. Come out of her in the name of Jesus. A devil of darkness. Out. Now. Now. Shatata rata. Reke tele mo subariata. Brento capriata laka. Rakata ba 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 ba. Out. Out. Fire upon you. Se tele ke pariata. Even the lawful captives shall be delivered fire 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 be set free right now in the name of jesus you have a glorious destiny no devil will hold you down in the name of jesus lawful captives be free i release you that devil of temper and anger go go i command you be free the plague of death over your family. Go, 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 go. I come in, I command that terminal disease. Now it's time. Time up. Time up. You are a devil. Go in the name of Jesus. Be free. Fire upon you. Fire upon you. Fire upon you. That devil cannot stand. Fire upon you. It's time to be free. Time to be free time to be free leave her let her go this lady has suffered too long you've held her destiny down go in the name of jesus once again come i stopped praying for you for a reason please take this guy up this gentleman look at me Cummings, do you know that your life, listen, listen, I saw upon this guy the spirit of Cain and I didn't know what it was. He was lying down there. That was why I walked there and laid my hands upon. You know the curse that was upon Cain? Bring them out. God is not done with them yet. You know the curse that was upon Cain? He said he won't die, but he will be a wanderer. This is how this guy's life has been. Today you are in Lagos. Tomorrow you are here. Next tomorrow you are this. It's time for your freedom. Free you. He was the sun. Has the time. My dear. Come and stand here. Yes. Come and stand here. Birthday girl. You are the one who celebrated your birthday yesterday. You're welcome. We are going to pray and minister to people. The ministers are, sir, you, you are done? Ah, please pray. Oh, please take time and speak into their lives. I beg you. These people came to receive. Ministers, go round, please. Prophesy to them. Where's Jamfa Jakes? Please, please move around. Where are the people I called out now? My dear, you know, the devil wants to make your life a waste. So you are moving, but you are not accomplishing anything. But the Lord loves you. And tonight, the eye of the Lord is upon you. Hallelujah. You believe that? Hold my hands. Both of your hands. Look at me. Just look at me. Lord, let this lady be free. From every oppression of darkness. In the name of Jesus. Be free. I set you free.
look at me. I'm seeing you pregnant. Drive every useless man out of your life. Are you listening to me? I'm not saying you are pregnant now. I'm saying I'm seeing in the realm of the spirit, not physically. Hallelujah. Praise God. So don't, please, kick any man who wants to come and talk grammar around you. Because I'm seeing that you are going to three countries. Number one, South Africa. Huh? Number two, UK. Number three, Canada. These three countries. The Lord is taking you there. Hold on. But then I see a lot of resistance rising up from wherever. I may not be able to talk all this with you because we're in the presence of people. But I want to pray for you. It's time. See, three things will happen. One, a passion for God you cannot recover from. The ministers are ministering to people around. While they are that devil, let me tell you, cast out every devil, prophesy, release people to their prophetic destinies. Let her go. Go! Go! Time up, thou devil of darkness. Be free now. Be free now. I command that wicked spirit. Depart from your life. Fire right now all over your body. I release the fire of the Holy Ghost. All over you. Right now. Leave her, let her go. For she shall not be called Jabez. That's what the Lord says as you say. Because you were born in sorrow, you will not be called Jabez. Tonight, I enlarge your coast in the spirit. My dear, look at me. From today, you will walk into your prophetic destiny. See, you don't know what it is that has happened to you now. Even you, you cannot answer. But look at me. You are a very good girl. Are you listening to me? But you are assuming the character of another person. Tonight, the Lord sets you free. This lady is a wonderful lady beyond your imagination. But sometimes, you see her doing things that even her does not know. Because I see the spirit of anger and rage. I mean rage almost to kill somebody. But the Lord sets you free. And this is what I'm seeing in the spirit. I'm seeing you move from the side and you are climbing a ladder and the Lord says, restore. This is what I prophesy. Restore. This is what will begin to happen to you. Restore. Hallelujah. If I... Ifai, hearing the name Ifai, Ifai, who is Ifai? Ifai, now, if you brought someone for healing from outside Zaria, quickly bring them phone, quickly, we have to round up, quickly, please bring them. If you invited someone, no matter how far you are outside, bring the person, sir, come. It's time for the Lord to set you free. Not only in your health, but on every area of your life. You believe that? Hmm. Hold my hands. Both of your hands. All right now, I speak to you. I open up that door. I challenge the works of darkness. Go! By the fire of the Holy Ghost. One, two, three. The Lord perfects you. Who brought this man? What's wrong with him? Bring them forward. He has what? His sight. He used to be bigger than this. But what happened? Because I'm seeing something like a rock upon his head. Who is Silvanus? It 
Sir, does he drink? Who is your friend that drinks? He's drinking. You need to get him born again and serious with God. Right? I want to pray for you right now. Your weight will come back. Your life will be restored. And your eyes, you will begin to see clearly. Hallelujah. Estefanus. Silvanus. From where? From Haido Road. From where? Haido Road. Eh? I A U. Hein Dogo. Ah, okay. You are born again. You love Jesus Christ. But you won't do ministry the way you are planning. You will start afresh with God. Alright? So disable all those man of God things. You will start afresh. Primary one, two, three, four, five. God will anoint you. Right? I'm going to pray for you. You believe what I'm saying. And leave all your friends who are deceiving you. Huh? You are going to be a great man, but you are not yet that man, so you will stay in the school of the spirit. Hmm? These teachings that you people jump and pride over, they are basic things in the spirit. Let God work with you. From today, you begin a new journey. Hold my hands. Lord, put a fire upon him right now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. A new beginning, fresh start. Just breathe in and out. As deep as you can. In and out. Baba, be free. Be free in the name of Jesus. Be free in the name of Jesus. Now, by the power of the Holy Ghost. Who brought him? He came on his own. What's wrong with you? My grain, put your hands on your head. Lay it. But he will first set you free. Then you will begin a walk with him. Any appetite and anything that does not belong to him will give way. You will be surprised what you begin to do in your life. Okay? Look at me. What am I doing? One leg in. Where is the other leg? Why? Because this is how your life is. It's time for you to love him with every passion. Hmm? So I break everything that is not of God in the realm of the spirit. Let the fire of God take over. Take over your life. Take over her life. Foul spirit, let her go. Lord, anoint her and use her. Affect my life, breathe on me. I look to you for life. Affect my life, breathe on me. Please do it quickly. Someone help her. Lift up your hands. I look to you. saw the sun rising over your family and then I heard this song I will wait for you Jesus you're the sun in my the days of oppression are over 
You are standing on behalf of your family. Something is happening to your father right where I'm holding. The Lord is setting him free. Today the Lord is giving you the mantle that was upon your mother. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Because as I look at you I see her face. And the Lord says I should tell you to run with the spirit of power. Whatever you decree will happen. The Lord will establish you and you will be a mother indeed. That all your times of tears will be taken away by a new joy. Take this message to your father. For the Lord visits your family tonight. What was I doing? Okay, the ministers are still... Okay, those that are around, Pastor Williams is here. Just, if the ministers are ministering, let them continue. But those that are around, even if it's just me and Pastor Williams, please, let's pray on the request. After we pray on the request, I'm going to begin to move prophetically and speak. This is the time you will receive. Are you listening to me? Stretch your hands towards this prayer request and begin to pray in tongues. Bishop. Stretch your hands. Shaba la bara do krasta bara bara. Rata kata prata kada bara bara bash. Paroka prande prade shida. Do miracles, oh God. Mare kata bara 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 bash. Solve every problem here, oh God. And for all our Facebook, Twitter. Egyptians, you see them no more. These 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 Egyptians. You are conquered. Whatever is conquered here is conquered. All over this country and around the world, we release testimonies, miracles in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, Lord, by your spirit, Lord, by your hand, Lord, by your spirit, Lord, by your great power, let there be miracles on this request. Miracles, supernatural miracles, terminate sicknesses, terminate diseases, never to return. Creative miracles in the name of Jesus. All supernatural jobs, supernatural wisdom, let it be done by your spirit. Miracles by your spirit, supernatural miracles by your spirit. Thank you, mighty God. In Jesus' mighty name. I found a reason why I sing. I found a reason why I sing. I found a reason why I sing. I found a reason. Lift your hands. Lift up your hands. Lift up your hands. I want you to receive every prophetic word because the creative power of God is going to swing into motion. The creative and prophetic power lift your hands as I pray 
I like you to shout a loud amen with your spirit. Hallelujah. Right now. Doors of delay. I command you. Be opened in the name of us. Delay. Be gone. Delay. Be gone. Delay. Delay in marriage. Delay in jobs. I cause it to its root. I release you in the name of Jesus. Every academic bondage. Every academic bondage. Kateka leko sopa. Repete lato sabadi adaka. In the name of Jesus. Be free. Be free. Be free. Mental blockage. Be free from it. Academic bondage. I set you free. This is the best exam you would have ever written in your institutions of learning. I prophesy it by the power of the highest. I call this session for you a season of seven-fold restoration. Seven-fold restoration. Seven-fold. Seven-fold. Not one-fold. Not two-fold. I speak it. Where you have been victimized, any student here, who has been victimized right now whether it is project or service year or whatever i change it in the realm of the spirit any one of your loved ones that has no job between today and the middle of april i command fearful supernatural job in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Every womb called Barry. I don't care whether the womb has been removed or not. Right now. In nine months time. You will celebrate miracle children. Be open. Every barren womb be open. Hallelujah. Every plague of death over your life or your family members. Make sure you are lifting your hands up. Every plague of death by the blood that speaketh better things. Because I see miscarriages. That the devil wants to bring to many families I see miscarriage of children every plague of death I command it to pass over you forever in the name of Jesus he said because thou hast loved righteousness and hated wickedness dear for God even thy God has anointed you with a type of oil called the oil of gladness that sets you above your fellows. The anointing that brings you above. I call you in the realm of the spirit. Rise up in the name of Jesus. Rise up. A new level of prosperity. A new level of lifting. A new level of wisdom. And Jesus grew in wisdom, in stature, and in favor with God and with men.
as surely as the Lord God of Israel lives, let a cloak of favor hit you where you are. Favor! 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 Every terminal disease in this place, HIV, cancer, in the name of Jesus, we terminate it once and for all. Be free in the name of Jesus. Be free in the name of Jesus. SS, AS, we change your genotype in the realm of the spirit. In the name of Jesus. Every demonic oppression that is responsible for where you are and where your family is tonight. It is time for the new anointing. Guard up your loins and be ready. Every yoke of bondage surely must be broken. I command every captivity over your family by the shed blood of Jesus Christ. Captivity ends in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I'm standing in the spirit before a gate. And the Lord is telling me, let God's people walk to it and move forward in their life. I command you by the spirit and according to the vision of the Lord to me, move forward. Go forward. No more stagnation in ministry. Enter your place of anointing. Enter your place of rest. Enter it. I place you inside it. I take you into the mantle of your life. The prophetic oil of your life. I release it. Move forward. Go forward. In the name of Jesus Christ. And I speak to you. Every Egyptian you see today. You are the one who knows the Egyptian. So lift your hands with faith in your spirit. Everything called an Egyptian. As surely as the Lord God of Israel lives. Once and for all. Bye bye to them forever. Bye bye to them forever. In your family. Bye bye to them. Bye bye to them. I release signs. Wonders. I release miracles. Take it. Take it. Take it. Take it. From the depth of my heart. According to the order of grace. We take your miracle. Take your miracle. Take your miracle. Everything your hand touches from today. In the name that is above all names, I command it to multiply. My brother, stand here. Bring this lady, come. This is what I'm demonstrating to you, what I saw in the spirit. That God is connecting you to the people who will take you to the next level of your life. May the Lord take you where your gift will be needed. May the Lord take you where your gift, I command demand upon your oil. Demand, prophetic demand. Every 
I command every uncompleted family project every uncompleted family project the Lord shows me the number 21 in the realm of the spirit and I pray that between now and the next 21 days I command angels of help I release it to your families receive it receive it help help is coming Zion's help the helper of Zion move across families move across families I tell you as surely as the Lord lives between today and the next 21 days you will see fearful testimonies by the hand of God hallelujah lift your hands I impart spiritual gift upon you at the count of seven let fresh fire fall upon everybody every one two three my God do it I see angels four five six there it is come on take it take it take it take it take it outside take it take it take it in the name of Jesus take it take it take it fire the prophetic the apostolic the evangelistic teaching mantles pastoral graces leadership entrepreneurship I fire it into your spirit Everywhere you have been deserted so that no man goes through you I call you an eternal excellency and a joy of many generations in the name of the Lord Jesus doors be open breakthrough breakthrough many of you don't know what breakthrough is you just receive it breakthrough I release it breakthrough I release it breakthrough I release it breakthrough an angel stands in this row take it breakthrough take it take it take it take it right to the back take it take it the Lord gives you a new name whatever you came here for whatever request you brought I command go back with a testimony go back with a complete testimony whatever you came here with go back with a testimony in the name of Jesus and every one of you who came from far and near to catch a fire and catch an anointing go back with that fire go back and reproduce these things and even greater receive it receive it Thank you, Jesus. 
Rabata Shalabakuria. Now, listen. The Bible says, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish. Listen to me, everybody, inside and outside. You're here and you've been struggling with your life. The Lord has been speaking to you. You know that now is the time to make it right with the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says, Whosoever will come to me, I will in no wise cast away. He said, Come unto me, all ye that are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Hallelujah. You've never made this decision for the Lord Jesus Christ. Especially many of you outside. Tonight is your night. Jesus is calling you. Jesus is saying, how long will you run away when I have a better life for you? When I can save you from eternal condemnation and lead you to the path of grace? Or you've given your heart to the Lord, but you found yourself derailing. Please, as you hear my voice, do not harden your heart. Hallelujah. At the count of three, inside and outside, I want you to leave your seat and rush out here. The Lord is calling you. You've not given your heart to the Lord. Leave your seat. They are coming. Appreciate them. Right now, leave your seat. Come right to the front. Clap for them. They are coming. Thank you, Jesus. You need to make it right with the Lord. Come out. Or you've been born again once, but you've derailed. Don't stay outside. No matter how far you are, find your way to the front. Forget about your friend. Please run quick. Quick, quick. Do it fast. Keep clapping, Koinonia. Thank you, Lord, for a harvest. Don't sit back. There are still more people outside. The Holy Ghost is speaking to you. Don't wrestle with him. Sister, brother, the time has come. There are still more people I see outside. Keep coming. We'll wait for you for one minute. Keep coming. No matter what you've done, there is a fresh start. Celebrate them. The devil is a liar. He will not hold you back. The devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. Hallelujah. Keep coming. Keep coming. You're welcome. Keep coming. Hallelujah. Thank you, brothers and sisters, for making this decision. Hallelujah. I'd like to pray for you. I'd like to lead you to Jesus Christ. It doesn't matter how far and how long you have gone. The Lord can give you a new start tonight. Are you listening to me? The Lord can give you a new start tonight. No matter how far you have gone. No matter how far you have gone. No matter how far you have gone. Lift your right hand to heaven. And say after me, Lord Jesus. Mean it from your heart. This is not a Bible recitation. Lord Jesus. I come before you. Acknowledging you as my savior. I believe you died for me. I believe you rose again for me. Today, I receive the gift of salvation. Come into my heart. Give me a new start. In the name of Jesus, I denounce sin. I denounce Satan. Make me a new person. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. From today, forward ever, backward never. The things I used to do, I'll do them no more. Because Jesus is Lord of my life. Father, I commend these ones to you. They have come out to make a genuine decision. Because they love you and they acknowledge you. My God, I pray that their salvation be genuine. And I pray that from today, you begin a walk in their lives. I command that you are free from every challenge you used to go through. In the name of the Lord Jesus, let peace return to your heart. Holy Spirit, I commend you to these ones. This is the assignment you have given on earth. I pray that you do great things in their life. 
in the name of Jesus. My brother, you are the one who drove me one time. The Lord will begin to do great things in your life and even in your family for this great decision you have made in the name of Jesus. Appreciate them in Jesus' name. Now, in one minute, I'd like you to follow the elder. I said the elders. Follow the ushers. Hallelujah. And they'll be able to have your details and will follow you up. When, sir? Jakes. Monday. Tomorrow. Tomorrow, what time? Tomorrow, 7 p.m. on the dot. Please be at chapel. Pastor Jakes will be following you up. We'll have foundational teachings that will bring to guide you and you'll be filled with the Holy Spirit. Ah, okay. The small ones, please. The very young ones, you're welcome. You can come by 4 p.m., all right? So that you are not roaming around 4 p.m. If you have to explain to your parents, please tell them you got born again. And if you need, if your parents want to talk to any of the ministers to confirm, no problem. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now, follow the ushers. God bless you. Appreciate them. You're worshiping with us for the first time. This is your first time of attending this glorious meeting called Koinonia. I'd like you to leave your seat and jump out quickly. Quickly. Appreciate them. Come on, Koinonia. There are many people outside. We celebrate you. Come on. Koinonia celebrates you. Give them a big welcome. If there's anybody sitting close to you who is coming for the first time, ask the person to come out. We have a blessing for you. Keep clapping. Wow. Keep clapping. They are coming. Please hurry up. Hurry up. Make way for them. Ushers, direct them. Thank you. Keep coming. Thank you, mommy. Keep coming. Keep coming. There's still space for you. There's still space. We acknowledge you and we want to tell you thank you for coming. Hallelujah. This is Koinonia. Put together by Eternity Network International. We thank God for what he's doing in our midst. How many of you were blessed tonight? I assure you, you will never be the same. You will go back and meet fearful testimonies. I assure you, you will know you met God tonight. In the name of Jesus. Thank you so much for coming. We love you. We truly celebrate you for making our time and the sacrifice to come here. Hallelujah. We are here every Friday building the word and helping us to understand the Holy Spirit and walk in partnership with him. We want to pray for you and prophesy upon you. Saints of God, stretch your hands upon them. Listen, we are anointed. So if we pray for you, believe it, it will happen in your life. Father, we pray that you bless them. Anoint everyone. May the Lord give you a testimony that will confirm that you met God tonight. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. May the Lord give you a testimony. Come out of her now. Out. Now. Out of her. Come out of her. Your testimony starts. Come out. Out of her now. now. Devil, come on. Out. Out of her. Come out of her. Out. 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 You have oppressed her for too long. She came for koinonia. Thou devil of darkness. Alright, your time is up. Go. Now. Fire upon you. Fire upon you. That demon of lust, leave her. Now. Now. In Jesus' name. You are free. In Jesus' name. Pick her up. Sister, you have received a visitation from the Lord. 
for you would have come back with the same problems you carried and brought here. But the Lord has visited you tonight. In Jesus' name. <laughs> Hallelujah. And for every one of you, don't you think we are playing when we are praying for you? We truly pray that you will go back with a testimony and an experience. That the things you used to do that are not consistent with the Lord, you will do them no more. Amen. Every bad relationship you came here with, we break it. Amen. You will go back, you won't find the other people again. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. May the Lord connect you to destiny help us. Amen. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And every bondage of Satan, we set you free from it. Amen. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you so much. I'd like you to quickly follow the ushers. They'll have your details and we'll pray for you and follow you up. We are here every Friday. The Lord bless you. Keep coming and invite others in Jesus' name. Celebrate them and appreciate them as they go back. Let's take the following announcements very quickly and we're out of here. Presbyo Consults Nigeria presents the Real Entrepreneurs Forum. Hallelujah. How to start and grow your business, how to raise capital, why most entrepreneurs fail, and so on and so forth. This is a business meeting. The facilitators are Mr. Femi Bolaji, the CEO of Intact Pharmaceuticals, Mr. Francis Yusuf, CEO, Real Eagles Prince, and Mr. Victor Mataya, CEO, Aspire Network. The date is tomorrow, 23rd of February. Saturday time is 9 p.m. The venue is Vet Multipurpose Hall. Watch out for the posters and please be there tomorrow, 9 a.m. in the morning. Hallelujah. This was put together by one of us. Please honor him and get blessed. Hallelujah. We are proud of this. Hallelujah. I think this is Isaac, right? That's Isaac. Hallelujah. We are proud to dedicate our new envelopes for mission and our school of ministry. Are you happy about that? <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We've made envelopes for our school of ministry and we've made envelopes for missions. So from today, anytime you're coming for Koinonia, hallelujah, as the Lord blesses you and as the Lord grants you grace, come prepared not only to give your offering but we'll drop the envelopes. You may not need to make any special call. You have your seed, whatever, from this night to sow into the school of ministry. These are arms of ENI. Hallelujah. The school of ministry is directed by Bishop Stan and the missions is directed by Jakes. Hallelujah, Pastor Jakes. So I'd like you to be part of what God is doing. Hallelujah. So every time you come from next week, inside and outside, we'll just drop the envelopes. You have your tithe, offering, and then appropriately just put in your seed there and we'll pray on it and speak into your life. I want to assure you that this house is fruitful ground. Hallelujah. By the grace of God, we are faithful with every money that comes and we use it for the reason why it was given. We dedicate this in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you for what you are doing in this house. We pray that everyone who will give for our school of ministry to raise and to train our students and to train generals in the spirit, my God, I pray that you will cause them to flourish and enjoy your blessings in the name of Jesus. And we pray for our mission, so oh God, as we visit hospitals, prisons, police centers, mission fields, and we supply welfare to many people, my God, I pray that whoever partners with this project will experience an open heavens. We dedicate this. It will only be used for the glory of the king. No man will be glorified but Jesus alone. We dedicate it in Jesus' name. God bless you. Hallelujah. From after the service, if you feel God is leading you the, em the envelopes, don't go with them, please. You just come and we'll place them there and then you just drop your seed. House on the Rock Foundation, Zaria presents Tehila Africa. A crazy African praise. The date is 28th February. Time is 10.30 p.m. Venue is Charity and Faith Missions. Ministering will be Steve Strings and many more. 
dress code strictly traditional. Hallelujah. This is announcement from our school of ministry. The closing date for the submission of the forms for ENI School of Ministry is next week Friday. Please listen carefully. Next week Friday will be closing for all the prospective students. And now the director has instructed that um, the fact that you have the form does not mean you, you are automatically a student. Hallelujah. And he said, you hold on with the school fees. We are going to go through um, a screening process and then we'll place the list. Am I right, sir? Bishop? Am I correct? Okay. Um, by the grace of God, the Lord has granted us grace to secure a venue. We'll be using God's time for our school of ministry. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. He granted it unto us free of charge. Absolutely free. Hallelujah. We thank God for it. Learn to celebrate what God is doing in the house. So please, the first of March, are there still forms? Okay, well, there are still forms. I understand that there are some of you, especially those who are from Kano and Mina. You can meet Bishop afterwards and you get it. And I know there was a pastor that told me he will be around. Please wait and collect it for yourself and your pastor. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salman. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him, that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here. Don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing. Keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing Jesus. I'll see you again. Bye.